Hi everyone, Tony from Hack the Movies here. Waterworld, did you know it was the most expensive movie at the time? It was the most expensive movie at the time, and then it failed. It failed at the box office. It failed at the box office. It was the most expensive movie at the time, and it failed at the box office. If you would like to know other things about Waterworld, like what the plot is, who's in it, keep watching this video. Welcome to Talking About Tapes. Tapes with talk, talking, talk, talking, talking about tapes. Hello, Ryan Hickey. Hello, how's it going? Um, it's going great. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Tony. Back so soon. Back so <laughs> soon. Yes. Uh, oh my God, Waterworld. I've been real excited. Not excited enough to silence my phone, but I've been real <laughs> excited to talk about this movie. We've had it on the calendar. I'm like, I'm gonna make sure I research everything I can about this film. Oh, yeah. I'm going to know it backwards in front, and then I forgot to watch it until this morning, so this movie's fresh in my head. And also, Ryan, I want to say thank you, and also I hate you, for letting me know about the Ulysses cut. Oh, man. Because I decided if I was going to go big, I was going to go big, and I watched the Ulysses cut, not realizing it is three hours long, and if there's any movie that didn't need to be three hours, it's this movie. Yeah, when I told you about that, I uh, I was in the middle of watching it, and I was like, "Man, they're on this boat for a long time." Okay, wow. And I is... I paused. I'm like, "Oh my god, I'm in the middle of it." <laughs> that's, that's, like, I, I was loving it. That, I mean, I was loving it. But that's uh, how I felt today. Holy... I was like, "Oh man, I gotta." Uh... I'm like, I gotta get this in today, and I'm, I'm watching for a while, I'm doing my notes, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I gotta do, like, one thing, let me see where I am, and I saw where I was in the movie, and I wanted to cry, I'm like, oh my god, no! Yeah. <laughs> anyway. In that three hours, Gilligan's and his crew got lost. <laughs> the three hour tour, the three hour tour. Um, so yes, Waterworld. Now, I was young when this came out, but I remember hearing about it all the time my grandfather was talking about yeah. it and pretty much everyone was talking about how it was going to be a disaster it was going to be a disaster <laughs> and then it came out and it kind of flopped at the time it eventually made its budget back it mm -hmm. apparently did well overseas merchandising on video uh but yeah that's all anyone could really talk about at the time was how much money they pumped into this because it was Funny thing, it's like $100 million. I know not adjusted for inflation, but yeah. these days I'm like, oh, it sounds pretty low for a yeah. movie. Like, no big deal. Uh, but yeah, they pumped a ton of money into this. They built that giant set. That's crazy. That is insane. That's so nuts. And I heard Spielberg said, just don't film it at sea. Yes. Uh, and they were like, oh, we can't think of any other way of doing it. <laughs> well, so, a lot of it is filmed at sea. Yeah. And other times it's definitely filmed in like a water thing because the water is a different color. Uh -huh. yeah. It goes from like ocean blue to like way too blue <laughs> in between shots. Um, but yeah, so I I don't remember the first time I saw this. I think I saw it on TV. It was probably not until college where I watched the whole thing front to back. Uh, just kind of as a joke. We can watch Waterworld. Uh, it feels like a movie I would have liked more growing up. I just didn't have enough exposure to it. Um, again, until college. Also college. I, I had a friend and somehow we went to her friend's house and this girl's dad had a Waterworld pinball machine. And that's, All right. That's my exposure to Waterworld. Ryan, what do you think of Waterworld? I love Waterworld so much. It is not a bad movie. That is a myth. Uh, I grew up watching this. I never saw it in theaters, but I did rent it all the time. And then uh, we watched it on TV because it was on TV a lot. Yeah. Uh, and we'd have tape of it. So I would watch that all the time. And, uh, you know, I wish I had webbed feet. <laughs> I wish I had some, some gross looking uh, gills. gills. Ooh, Neck uh, gills. You know. I it's, think it's a good. It was a good. Yeah, it was one of those movies. Like, let's watch Waterworld. Like, totally, uh, totally, <laughs> like not ironic at all. Is it one of those movies you found out later is not as popular as you thought I, it was? Well, I think I had heard that was like the first time I was aware of of like, oh, well, this movie is like this is a flop. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what the hell does that mean? And like, didn't make any money. I'm like, who cares? <laughs> this movie's amazing. 
That, Did you guys see it? It's Kevin Costner. Yeah. He's on a boat. He's stabbing people. He's you're like, you're like, people. it's almost as good as the Postman. And they're like, oh, buddy, we got something to tell you about. <laughs> that was his other apocalyptic film that he tried. Um, yeah, I do like that with movies when you think a movie, like you re- grow up and realize like, oh, for me, I was just like, oh, Spawn's not a popular film. I thought that was like a household thing. Exa- I would watch that <laughs> same thing with Spawn. I'm like, that was so good. It was so good. The credits <laughs> start with, oh, yeah, it was so good. Oh, the end's <laughs> a little weird, but it's really good. <laughs> yeah, ending's kind of stupid, but everything yeah. else is great. Waterworld's kind of not stupid. Yeah, sort of the same thing. I don't know. <laughs> we'll get into it. Yeah, Kevin, what did you? Where was your exposure to Waterworld? So one of my childhood best friends. This is like his favorite movie, and <laughs> we used to watch this a lot on VHS at his house. So uh, I didn't see it in the theaters or anything like that. But we we watched that VHS tape quite a few times, and <laughs> I mean, I've always enjoyed it. I think it's fun. I definitely think that there's a lot of just like shots at sea, but <laughs> you know. There's also lots of cool explosions. Okay, were you guys, like, aware and familiar with the Mad Max movies when you saw this? I think I saw this before I saw Mad Max. Okay. I, if I had seen Mad Max, it was Thunderdome. I just saw it on TV. Like, I think I knew who Mad Max was, but hadn't seen the the films, like, all the way through until, I think, high school. Okay. Because that was... I was, like, around high school and whatnot is when I really got into Mad Max. But I was real into Beyond Thunderdome in mm. the 90s because Joe Bob played it on his show. Yeah. So I saw that before Waterworld. So I'm coming from, like, this where, like, you go into Waterworld and you're like, oh, no, I know what they're trying to do. It's not quite working for me, though. But I can see if you were, like, divorced from that and you, like, went in blind how this would be a cool concept. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. I got some facts about the film here. Okay. All right. Uh, from the director of Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. One of the best movies of all time. I'm just going to say right now. Yeah, him and Kevin Costner. Prince of Thieves is fantastic. It's so good. Him and Kevin Costner. Uh, I wish it was three hours long. But, you know, <laughs> when are we reviewing Prince of Thieves? I, have how, you done that on this show yet? I have not. All right, that's sometime. Another one. That's when sometime. Sean Connery comes at the end of that, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. I'm the king of England. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I kind of, my, my brain, I, I saw Robin Hood Men in Tights more than Prince of Thieves. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, they ended up, obviously, uh, Kevin Reynolds walked off this film t- before the release. Like, uh, maybe while they were still shooting, it got a little fuzzy I think there. so, yeah. Uh, they didn't work again until that made-for-TV movie in 2012, The Hatfields and McCoys. That, I guess mm. they it took them, like, 20 years to finally, like, make up afterwards. Well, I watched uh, a documentary. There's a feature-length documentary on the Blu-ray. <clears throat> and uh, the director said, after working with Kevin Costner on Robin Hood, like the year before, yeah, they were like, "Hey, so we got this this great movie. We have a star who wants to do it, and we really want you to direct it." And he was like, "Great, who's a star?" And they went, "Kevin Costner." And he went, "Fuck you, bye." <laughs> and uh, then like, no, 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 please, 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 we want, we really want you to do it. We really, really want him to do it. And they got him in a room, like in a hotel room, and they were like, "I'm just gonna buy, you know, room service." We're going to have some drinks, and we're just going to hash it out. I'll see you guys when you're done. Yeah. Please, we really want to do this movie with you, too. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. It, they, Robin Hood is in the woods. Yeah. If you had a hard time with Kevin Costner in the woods. They worked on a couple films together, I think, yeah, at that I point, so. too. One called Fandango and like, another one. And I guess at that point, he was like, I need a fucking break. Yeah. Uh, and yes, from the writer of Critters 2 <laughs> and The Fugitive, which and was really Fugitive. good. He eventually went on to do the Riddick trilogy. Uh, his, his writing credits, he's got like some good ones and some like real stinkers. It's back and forth, but very consistent, uh, with work. Like, you know, sometimes you look up a writer and director and they just fall off. This guy's still working. Um, so yeah, uh, speaking of writer, they needed some last minute rewrites on the set. Uh, they apparently got Joss Whedon and Joss Whedon complained the entire time. And if you've been following the show, we realize that Joss Whedon likes to complain about other people on movies. (laughs) <laughs> on bad movies that he's attached to. And it's like, yeah, Joss, it can't be a coincidence yeah. that, like, at some point, you might be partially responsible for this. Um, they fired the guy who did the music. And they, uh, yeah. they threw in James Newton Howard toward the end. Uh, not that bad of a score, no, to be honest. No, it's not terrible. Could be, um, sorry, what was I, it? it could be worse. 
Yeah. I'm kind of interested. I would like to hear what it originally was because apparently the studio thought it just wasn't very exciting. It was mm. very romance type of uh, yeah. know, stuff. I think it's actually, if you watch the teaser trailer, the original teaser, I think that's the original uh, composer. I it's very like. Mm. It's it's edited like it's a romance. Okay. And the music is very like. Mm-hmm. Well, the whole middle section kind of. It's not a very good romance, Especially but the it is. Cut. Yeah, oh. God. Yeah, I need. Yeah, there are some scenes where I'm like, I don't know if this was in the theatrical cut, but we'll find yeah. out. Um, it's funny. I have it here. It was one of the highest grossing films of 1995, despite the fact it was technically a financial failure. We're kind of seeing that again now. And yes. I did like a little short video. Not just me. A bunch of people took note of that this summer. They're of like so much money in. They got to do really good to make it back. Mm. Yeah. But that's the thing. Like, they're yeah, they're put the budgets are getting out of control. Like, what was it? Captain Marvel. The new Captain Marvel, like, bombed financially. But if you look at the numbers, like, technically a lot of people saw that movie. Yeah. yeah. But they spent so much fucking money making it that, like, it will never... Recoup, uh, recoup. Um, so it's fun to see that like this happened back then, and it's now happening way more. Yeah, it's it's it was like a it was like an oddity where like one or two movies a year did that. Mm-hmm. This year we had like last year we had like five movies like bomb with gigantic budgets. No one learned their lessons from Waterworld. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like all these recent movies. Waterworld is incredibly interesting and unique, even if it's not a great movie. Yeah. And uh, new movies now, even like The Flash. Mm-hmm. I watched The Flash recently, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, uh, all right. Well, I just spend that much money. There are <laughs> half the movies in a field. The yeah. Other half's in like a bat cave. Yeah. Well, the bat cave was a set at least. I, oh, <laughs> some of the money was spent on actors they cut out later. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, like. Oh it's god! That, well, that had more to do with like COVID delays, yeah. false starts, and then well, then they just start, you know knew they were going to reboot. So yeah. yeah, let's let's not set up all these characters for new story arcs. Yeah, yeah, tons of reshoots. Um, but yeah, this this movie went over budget mm. and over time because the set was like taking forever to maintain. But I have it here; it did uh, boost the Hawaiian economy a little bit <laughs> because they That's were good. there for so yeah. long. <laughs> um. <clears throat> Now, the biggest impact this film ever had was a Peg Warmers episode where we talk about the toys. The <laughs> second biggest impact this film ever had was the stunt show <laughs> at Universal Studios, which apparently it's not in Orlando, so I've never seen it. But I went to look it up. I'm like, oh, yeah, have they replaced it? I'm like, no, there's multiple <laughs> Universal resorts it's that crazy. all have this stunt show. It's a really good stunt show. And you know what? I feel like I watched it in the movie, and we'll get to that scene, because yeah. that's one of my issues with this. Um, and last thing that I have for the behind the scenes here, uh, from what I read, uh, they very clearly went in making a Mad Max ripoff. Like, they weren't oh, shy absolutely. about it. They got the cinematographer from the Road Warrior uh-huh. to do this. So uh, Apparently, they actually had uh, George Miller visit the set. Really? Like, hey, can you just come down and visit the set? And he was like, yep, yep. Yeah, I'll I'll come see to what you're going for. Okay, I get great. it. Mad Max on the water, got it. Yeah. And Mad Max on the water isn't that bad of an idea. That's a good elevator yeah. pitch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's a pretty good idea. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's go through this film. Mm-hmm. It opens up with, I what seems like movie trailer voiceover. The polar ice caps have melted, covering the Earth with water. <laughs> this this narrator that never comes back again. I don't know if it's one of the characters from the In movie. A world, a water <laughs> world. <laughs> Basically, that's what he does. Okay. Uh, we get told that the polar ice caps melted and uh, it flooded the entire world. I don't think that's very accurate. I don't think that's how it would happen. Yeah, it would definitely so. be a problem. Well, they had scared all of us in the 80s that that's what would happen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't like, get me wrong. Gonna melt. We're all going to be underwater forever. Yeah. It would be a problem, especially if you lived on the coast. Uh, yeah. But I I feel like we I would need to get it. it's only like 20 feet. If, the, if all the polar ice caps melted, it would only raise the water tw- only. I mean, 20 feet is a, a lot if you're living on the coast. But... There would be other issues there. Yeah. The amount of water is not the main issue. Yeah. It would be like... The inv- the weather is all fucked. The life's would get all all this. Yeah, stuff, you know, like, there were like the, the water would be flooding part like, is a little uh, overblown. Uh, but yeah, in this movie, it covered the whole world, 
And uh, we're in, we're introduced to our hero pissing into a bottle. Very cool. And converting it into drinking water. I've been pissing into bottles ever since. Do you have a converter? No. But <laughs> You're working on that part. <laughs> you can still drink it, though. It is sterile. You're stockpiling all yeah, the urine I mean, for I when the them, apo- you, when you get that filter. <laughs> I will get the filter, and then I'll have a stockpile. Right now, I just have shelves of urine uh, and sorts of... Containers, bottles, Maxwell House <laughs> coffee cans. Um, okay, so this scene, <laughs> this movie loves to do one thing. Uncomfortable sexual assault scenes. But it likes to do another thing. Show you how every bit of machinery works in great detail oh, yeah. without cutting any of it out. <laughs> so yeah, there is like, he pees into the thing. It goes with the water. We see how that whole system works. And then later on, he does a sale and we see that whole thing. And, and like the, throughout the, the rest of the movie, yeah, yeah, they want to show you how ever I'm like, look, I'll just trust <laughs> maybe in the beginning. Sure. To this, ease me into it. This is not Star Trek and Star Wars where we're just making <laughs> stuff up here. This is legit. <laughs> it works. Yeah. Star Wars. They'll be like, uh, uh, crank the Johnson rod and be like, oh, obviously. Yeah. Well, there's a kyber crystal in here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> dilithium. Oh, yeah, of course, dilithium. Yeah, but right. this is like, no, we need to show how the pee gets into the filter. And then he's got the grains of sand that bring him up from the bottom. Like, what the fuck? I don't need all this yeah. information. <laughs> um. So, yeah, uh, he waters his plant. He goes underwater. Where is he going? We don't know yet. Uh, and he comes back with some boots and a lighter. Then I we, love it that he's putting on yeah. like uh, with a ski boots. Yeah, I'm like that's so <laughs> so crazy. Uh, then we meet a drifter. I know I just made a Seinfeld reference a second ago, but this is the Jiffy Park guy from Seinfeld, the one who was running a prostitution ring in uh, the car rental. Okay, yeah, <laughs> this movie is so full of that guys. That guys. Yeah, it should be called. Water world, that guy. <laughs> I mean, there's that guy from Monster Squad. Uh, yes, I, I had that. One of the elders like, is scary German guy yeah, from Monster Squad. The one guy talking about I get a little girl. Kim <laughs> Coates. Kim Coates. He's, yeah, uh, he's from Scanners and all this other yep. stuff. And Jack Black's in there. We got young Jack, Jack Black. Black. When the Ulysses cut has a de- deleted scene with him. Where he's like, they killed my partner. Ooh. I that was okay. That and is a deleted scene. I was scene. watching that. I was like. That looks like Jack. That is Jack Black. Yeah, okay. it's Jack well, Black. He's the pilot of the airplane. Yeah, so yeah. Funny. He's he's got a funny scene early on, and I have a lot of questions about his character. <laughs> um, but yeah, he lets the mariner know about an atoll that's eight days mm-hmm. away. Apparently, there's a bunch of atolls, or at least there used to be. There used to be. <laughs> uh, Costner's acting is really bad in this. The only thing that I think it's missing is uh, an attempt at a. British accent. <laughs> I just really yeah. want to be like, I'm Robin Hood. Ooh. I get what he's <laughs> going for, because besides the first Mad Max movie, Max doesn't talk too much in two no. and three. I get he's going for that, but like, and like he's he's got the whole looking stoic down. Uh-huh. He's got that, but then he has that scene where like the, the Middle Eastern or Italian guy, I always forget what that guy is. He's like, ah, oh, let's do a trade. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then he's just like, nothing is free in water world. Nothing's free in water world. I'm like, oh my God, that's a <laughs> terrible line delivery. You're like, you're a very oh. famous actor. Could you do another take of that? The, um, apparently the director, and I don't know if it was a dig at Costner, mm. but he was like, well, he made very specific choices about the character. Mm. Uh, he was going through a divorce. So I think a lot of that... Um, it was a very public divorce, apparently, too. When I was doing research, it was like, that was a lot of... Was it with another celebrity? No, it was just, oh. It was just. I think because of Dances with Wolves, he's like this He was the star. biggest guy in the world. Ah. He was a big guy, and they were like, let's take this guy down a peg, all right? Um. <laughs> Your wife's leaving you? <laughs> okay. And, uh, I mean, I think, I think it, uh, it definitely colored that performance yeah a val, bit. val kilmer had a little weird part in the 90s where he was going through a bad divorce yeah. famously island of dr moreau where he showed up he was supposed to be the star of the film and then he's like nah i want to be the other character with less lines and they're like ah uh, i guess we're redoing the whole movie now. yeah um uh, okay i can kind of see that also 
there's more I have a note about that highlights this a little bit later, but I feel like a lot of this is ADR because they were actually filming on mm-hmm. the ocean. They couldn't have had good sound. No, no, no. So he might have been bored that day in the sound booth. <laughs> Um, smokers show up. They're the bad guys. The smokers. Where are they getting the smokes? They have a lot of cigarettes. They Somebody saved a and, lot of tobacco when the world flooded. And you know what? You brought that up and I was like, you know what? I haven't watched the movie in a while. But I bet you on that big boat, we're going to see that they have plants and they're growing the tobacco leaves. But no, they're all in cartons like back from back then. Mm-hmm. I'm like, there's no way. This doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Anyway, they're the bad guys. They have go juice in their jet skis, the black stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they chase uh, those dudes. The, which we call it, the Mariner. I forgot. Kevin yeah, Costner's name Mariner. is the Mariner. the Mariner. He goes back for his bag. And then this is when he's cranking the machine that builds the sail. He's like kicking stuff, cranking, He is turning, flipping and flopping. Do it. I'm like, wow. <laughs> And dangling from ropes. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, oh god, it reminded me of um another ego driven film. Uh we reviewed it on the show, a movie dumpster, uh the Kenneth Branagh Frankenstein. Oh where yeah. Kenneth Branagh had to look like the most amazing guy in the world. Like when he makes the monster, I don't know if you remember that movie. Oh, I remember. It couldn't just be he like throws some knobs. He has to be shirtless and swinging around the lab and, sweaty and, and looking like sweaty. Sexy. I'm like, this reminds me of that. It was like, I can't just drive the boat. I got to be like cranking it uh-huh. and running around. It's like, oh my God, this is too much. It's the only way we'll believe the sailboat goes faster than the jet ski <laughs> is if he's working harder than those yeah. guys. Uh, but yeah, I like that he trashes the drifter's uh, boat mm-hmm. and leaves them behind because the drifter stole tomatoes from his plant. He's not, uh, has he a stole le- tomato or plant. lemons or limes? Lemons, That's I little, think, yeah. yeah. He gets a tomato yeah. plant later. Uh, I don't know why the drifter, like, showed that. I wouldn't have showed that off right yeah, away. Why would you, yeah, I'm like, ah, <laughs> He's he like, ah, I I'm stole like, your food. It's like, don't do that, you yeah. asshole. I'm like, his ship is four times the size you. Yeah. <laughs> size decides to turn and just. I don't know, kill you, steal his rhymes back, whatever. <laughs> Shoot a harpoon through you. Yeah. 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 He'd throw a rock at you. <laughs> or a bottle of pee. Rocks are very valuable. Yeah. yeah, rocks are very important in this world. Oh, yeah. Um so we get to see the atoll, and I love that there's just people parked outside of it mm. making trades to get like, in. I trade my hair for hydro. And you know what's funny? We'll get to it. I was sitting there, I'm like, why is he trading his hair? And it took me until we get to that one scene. <laughs> Uh, so that was a fun mystery for me. Yeah. I'm like, I need to know what's up with that guy's hair. <laughs> Although the clashing of accents here made it really hard to tell who was saying. Well, I'm like, it is weird. Yeah. I'm like, what is he saying? What's going on here? Um, the Mariner buys his way in with a mound of dirt. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, the dirt is important because they have a big tree in there. And they got to put dirt around. Yeah, they got to put dirt yeah, around I mean, it. You got to grow your tobacco somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so they're growing trees, and then they're showing when someone dies, they ceremonially drop them into a pit to be fertilizer, and I'm like... Yeah, just a big muck pit. Yeah, that it's very nasty. gross. I'm like, I get it. I get the idea. It makes yeah. sense. Who wants to live in that, though? Like, that's... <sighs> your, your house is built it around it. terrible. <laughs> also, dead bodies float. It didn't look like she was weighted down with anything. No. Did I miss something? Was she? Did she have weights That's on That's why the rocks are important. You put them you in with the You need the rocks body. for it. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> um, so they're suspicious of the Mariner. Because mm-hmm. they're like, where did you get this? Says, I got it from yeah. another atoll. They're like, yeah, that one was destroyed. <laughs> and they're like, what happened? He's like, I don't know. Everyone was dead. That's where, <laughs> where I got it from. <laughs> Bargains with them. He, w- he wins his deal. He, or yeah. wins his bargain. He's like, no, you're doubling the... What is the currency? Chitlip? Ch- I think it's just... Is it... Chits? Chits? Yeah. Something like... Yeah, I don't know. Did I say chitlets? <laughs> uh, chicklets? <laughs> um, yeah, chits. I don't know what those are. Yeah, I have no idea. But, uh, but they're very valuable. He gets a lot of them. He gets a whole bucket full. Yeah, because they need that dirt. Yeah. It's almost amazing in a post-apocalyptic world mm. that there would be currency. You would yeah. just, oh, just yeah. trade direct, useful stuff. Yeah. yeah. We're back to a barter system in the apocalypse. Yeah. But I want to know, like, what, is, what are they made of? Are they metal? Maybe. You could use that for, like, something. Anything. Oh, that's like the uh, the Mad Max game. If you can you get like metal scrap. to yeah. do anything yeah. with it. No. Um, yeah, so Mariner meets Helen, who's running a store. Although... The store is very empty. <laughs> it's like literally got shelves, nothing in there. 
It's hard to order supplies and yeah. stock the yeah, store yeah. in this day and age. So he's ordering stuff. She ha- doesn't have canvas, but she has hair, which they use as like rope and stuff. Uh, I'm like, I'm like, all right, that's clever. That yeah. one got me. That I'm like, that was a good mystery for me. Now I know why all the men are growing their hair out because they probably like cut it uh-huh. routinely. <laughs> While this is happening, we meet one of the bad guys, blonde guy. I didn't catch his name, but I think uh, we reviewed yeah, his forget. action figure. What was his name? <laughs> forget blonde guy he's blonde guy in this review yeah i forget i was just like i'm like oh that's his name yeah okay are you Um, looking it up i'll try to find it he was i guess he was uh he was in the dark knight uh as like a commissioner or something like that because i was like what is he looks familiar and i'm like oh wait no I think he's the judge in Batman Begins. Maybe yeah, he has that like face. I think he yeah. might be the judge. In ba- but there was something about his there. face like, that oh, looked okay. familiar. He's in one of those movies. Cool. Judge Judge Faden, I think, Maybe. in that movie. Um, so yeah, he's talking to another guy who also looked a little familiar, uh, and they're like, "By the way, that girl has a tattoo on her back, and I heard a rumor that it was a map to dry land." And the little girl is Enola. Did she look familiar to you? Oh, yeah. I know where she's from. You know where she's from. <laughs> she's where is she Deb from? Deb from Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah. She is Tina from Napoleon yeah. Dynamite. <laughs> it, like, I'm sitting there. I'm just like, wait, that girl's face looks familiar. <laughs> I haven't seen this movie that many times. Except for me, I was watching Napoleon Dynamite and being like, oh, it's the girl <laughs> from Waterworld. <laughs> I had the same. I was like, oh, wait, what's, what, she looks. Oh, my God, Waterworld. <laughs> oh. um, yeah, so Tina is Enola. Uh, from Napoleon Dynamite. Uh, what you got? Uh, so the Mariner's trying to leave. He buys a bunch of shit. Buys a tomato plant. Buys, he's, like, everything they have, plus the shelves and the store. The oh, he got all that money. Oh, man. Yeah, I would have been like, well, no, we need the shelves I for know, later. not leave anything for anybody. Yeah. yeah. Screw you guys. Uh, but yeah, so he's about to leave. Then the elders are like, hey, could you do us a favor? Could you knock this broad up? <laughs> They're like, because we have one person dead. We need an extra person. I yeah, was like, oh, well, uh, we could do it. But, you yeah, know. He's like, that thing gets a little messy. A little messy. Right. <laughs> we would rather have new people in there. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to. And then they find out that he's a mutant. Oh. Gills. Oh my, yeah, well I love that with the, no man who's been out at sea that long would give up a woman. I guess, I guess, uh, okay. Brian, I, I, this, the worst part of the apocalypse was apparently no gay people survived, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure there might have been some guys who were like, no, I'm fine without a lady. (laughs) That guy might be gay or a mutant. (laughs) That would still be an issue in the water. Either way, put him in a cage. (laughs) (laughs) But no, they see his gills yeah uh he has webbed feet which i thought was ridiculous why wouldn't his hands also be webbed that's i know confusing. and the webbed oh. feet didn't look very helpful it was like this is not like yeah. great it's not like the toes spread yeah like, it doesn't look like the creature it, it was his like he's wearing feet. a gross yeah. sock it just looks like his toes are fused yeah. together <laughs> Did we find the guy's name yet? I think his name is Nord, but my internet's not working to show me the picture of the toy. <laughs> We're just calling him Blonde Guy. Blonde Guy. <laughs> blonde Guy it is from now on. Uh, so, yeah, they pretty much, they capture him uh, because, you know, they don't trust him because they hate mutants. Although it's it's a little all over the place. Have this they movie. met another mutant? That's the thing. That's what I was wondering. Because they act like they know what mutants are and they hate them. But then a lot of them haven't. It seems like a lot of them haven't interacted with a mutant before. It's like, well, how do you know they're as popular as you think? Yeah. It's a little confusing. I mean, maybe one bad mutant wrecked an atoll, and so now it's just... Magneto. Magneto. Magneto God, did yeah. it. That was <laughs> Magneto. <laughs> he survived, and he threw a fork in the air with his power, and they're like, get out of here, asshole. Yeah, the w- <laughs> one thing I thought was pretty cool, I didn't notice until I watched the uh, Ulysses cut, mm. was how much religious, like... Yeah. Everyone is religious. Like mm. they're religious. The smokers are religious. And uh I was like, I have to rewatch the theatrical cut. Because I watched that first and yeah. then Ulysses, I'm like, I don't remember what was what. I'm so lost. Like Is a lot of that cut out of the theatrical cut? I don't I don't know. I don't I'm not sure. I like I like the idea, um, and we'll get to the one part, but I like how like their religion is kind of based off like stuff from the present and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, another movie that did that pretty interestingly was uh cloud atlas you ever see cloud atlas by the wachowskis they have a whole thing because that movie covers like 
millions of years mm. pretty much and like the religion in like the later half of the film is okay. like tied to like just a regular person yeah. earlier in the movie um but anyway uh they lock him up in a cage uh that'll teach you mutant yeah, yeah. this is definitely uh very very reminiscent to me of the mist okay it's like it's like a Angry mob. They're yeah. very religious. Yeah. Like weird. Like they're blaming everybody for everything and like making me uncomfortable. <laughs> the Mist is a very uncomfortable oh, yeah. movie, especially that ending. <laughs> um, so yeah, the elders uh, go through his stuff and they jump to conclusions. They have like a clarinet or something. And they're like, this is to listen to things. Yeah. Like, how do you know what this that is? This is a torture device. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, this God. is They're bad. all scuttle from the Little Mermaid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> This um, is a dingle hopper. <laughs> <laughs> Helen tries to get them to spare the mariners. They're like, look, he found a lot of this stuff we've never seen. Maybe he knows where dry land is. He might be useful. Yeah. You and know, he's she really like, point, skilled. She points out the obvious. She's like, there's no other atolls around. Our machines are getting pretty bad. Yeah. It's only a matter of time before. Because they have a machine that turns salt water mm-hmm. into water. And they're like, that's not holding up as well as it used to. Yeah. Uh, I think that whole, I don't know if you could tell us, uh, mm -hmm. but I think that whole scene at night is only in the Ulysses cut. Oh, really? Yeah, because Hmm. I don't, I don't remember that. Do you know what scene we're talking about? Well, I mean, there's a scene where they, they talk to him in the cage, but that has to be in there. No, no, not the cage. The scene where the elders are just talking. He's in the cage and he's like looking Maybe that is just the Ulysses cut. In a building, you can see a light and then it cuts them all like. The whole village around a table, basically okay. having yeah. a court case. Okay, then that is the thing. Yeah, yeah, so they're debating what to do, and they're like, we're going to get rid of him. And they're like, and also we're going to get rid of that girl. Yeah, and that girl, your no. girl, we, we should kill her too. Like, but they whoa, mentioned, like, whoa, when she okay. came into the atoll, she also had, like, dirt. Yeah. So, so whoever sent her there sent mm-hmm. her with, like, a bunch of dirt. Then there's an astronomer who's uh, the the dude from Jurassic Park 3 and Air Oh, Bud. I was going to say Air Bud, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the dude from Air Bud. Yeah, Gregor. Old yeah. Gregor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He plays the same character in, like, every movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he was a little bit more serious in Jurassic Park 3, and then That's a velociraptor yeah. broke his neck. Um, Just a shame. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, they're talking to him. He's trying to figure out what the tattoo is. He's looking at the stars. He's yeah, doing all this, and he's like, "Anola, would you just tell me what they are?" She's like, "I don't know." <laughs> Meanwhile, she's drawing horses. She's like, "I've never seen it. It's on my back." <laughs> she's drawing palm trees and horses. And yeah, like, all the stuff. And like, yeah, and they're like, "What are these things? <laughs> what is it? Just drawing nonsense." Um. All right. So Anola is basically like, "Why don't you talk to the mariner? He might know." And then, like, uh, Gregor goes to the Mariner, and he's like, can I look at your gills? What are your gills? He asks them, and like, are they vestigial? Are they, are they functional? What, what is the deal with them? The guy's like, I don't really want to talk about my gills <laughs> with a stranger. Yeah. Uh, but the Mariner's like, look, I'll exchange information if you get me out of here. But then the old Gregor is too afraid to do it. Because then that other guy, there's, like, uh, the security dude yeah. of the Atoll. He doesn't really hate the Mariner. He's just trying to just keep the peace. He's paid to, like, yeah, I'll just uh, this, the cage alone. This is the part where he's talking to him at night, right, though? Yeah, yeah. this I part, love, yes. I love that he has, like, a flashlight attached to a windmill hat. Yeah. Uh, like, he's power. Like, that's some, very some cool. subtle detail. But, yeah. like, yeah, the windmill on his hat is powering his <laughs> flashlight to talk to him. And then earlier they showed him powering up the, uh, whatchamacallit, the, uh, the Atoll's, like, electricity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But in that scene that you missed, the girl's like, our windmills are, like, falling, are, like, not yeah. working. So they're, they're on limited uh, electricity here. Uh, they sentenced the Mariner uh, to be recycled. <laughs> So they're going to just dip him into the damn goop. Shame. <laughs> like a cartoon character in Roger Rabbit. <laughs> yeah, they're going to put him in the dip. <laughs> this execution is cut short, though, because we got a smoker invasion, baby. <laughs> and finally, we get the Deacon. He's the greatest. By Dennis Hopper. And look, if you're good, <laughs> this is a good rule. If your movie is bad and it's going to be bad anyway... Put Dennis Hopper in there and have him do whatever he wants. Make it like, fun bad. Like like Super Mario Brothers. He's yeah. so good in that. In this, he's even better in that. Like, I genuinely, he's the best part of this movie. His character makes no sense. Why does he have this accent still? How does he know so much about the world <laughs> before? Uh, but I just don't care because he's so charismatic and yeah. fun. <laughs> 
Uh, and it seems like he's not like a tyrannical leader like a lot of these movies. It no. seems like he actually enjoys hanging out with his bros. He keeps calling everyone cousin. Yeah, they like, all cousin. call each other I think, cousin. I think that's because they're all interconnected. <laughs> probably. probably. Yeah, like yeah, how at the Atoll they're trying to get an outsider to yeah. you know, put some yeah. new genes into the gene pool. Yeah. I think everybody on yeah. the Exxon Valdez is <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually Exxon related. Where they worship St. Joe, and I can't wait to talk about when oh, we find yeah. out who St. Joe is. Um, so yeah, the... Smokers attack. Um, Jack Black is one of the smokers. He's on the, <laughs> the, the big guns. And I have my notes here. Um, this is supposed to be an action scene, but this feels more like a stunt show. It does. A Waterworld stunt show, stuntacular, if you will. It really does. It, the fact it really, that there, really does. There are two boats that are custom ramps for people to ski and jet ski. Mm -hmm. I'm like... Okay, this isn't really like a fight scene. Wait, is, is it more efficient to jet ski with a ramp over a wall or just jump out of the airplane into the water on the other side yeah, of the wall? That's true. Like, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I, and like, when the people are, I don't mean like the people on the jet skis, but there are people who are water skiing right, right. Mm -hmm. and go in and then like, they're just swimming awkwardly. I'm like, well, they'd be easy to kill. Couldn't yeah. they have just been on the pontoons of the plane though? And yeah, just dropped just, into the atoll. Yeah. Maybe there's a weight limit. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I just love that there's just a boat, two boats that are meant to just be ramps. <laughs> like, that's their only purpose. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it feels more like a stunt show and less like an action yeah, scene. Yeah, it's like two opposing stuntmen armies <laughs> fighting each other. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, and then Gregor, during all the chaos, accidentally sets off his flying, his uh, blimp, his float. Oh, what I a tripped. goofball. Yeah, and he's oh. like, I did it on accident. I'm sorry. And he's like, jump. Oh, no. His reaction when he tries to, like, shut it off and the the, pull, the, the, the handle breaks, snaps. he's like, so falls good. across the room. It's like, oh, my God. Oh. Um, Helen rescues the Mariner. Uh, and then he super swims. He jumps in the water like a it's missile. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't apparently think he, they, ever, he never does this again, I feel I don't like. Think so. There might be like one or two shots, yeah. but apparently they, they like hooked him up to a cable and just pulled him through the water. And he he worked with an Olympic swimmer to like practice like how can I look like I'm swimming yeah. prop, like very well. Yeah, but you they know, just I, like would drag him through the water. For a minute I thought it was like a dummy, but yeah, no, his feet are uh -huh. moving a little bit during that, but I like that he explodes out of the water. That's so crazy. Um and he's like kicking ass. <laughs> Um, so they, they all get on his big boat. Mm -hmm. Um, what was it called again? Oh, it was the, the Exxon Valdez. No, 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 oh, no, no. Oh, uh, That's the bad guy uh, ship. The bad guy ship, I'm sorry. Mariner's boat. Oh, we Mariner's boat. The, the Trimoran. The Trimoran. They get on the Trimoran. Um, and I like that he, like, he harpoons Jack Black's boat. And Jack Black will not stop firing. Uh -huh. And he gets him to shoot the other boat. But I like that they're like, God, What's his name? They're like, Chuck, they're like, Chuck, stop. Me, like, the reason is the gun is loud and he can't hear him. But Deacon well, and, he's and got his like boy. like black, I don't know, yeah. whatever, all over his face, all over his goggles. But then and... Deacon and his boys are like, he's not hearing us. And I love that. Like, what's his oh. face? This feels like a Joss Whedon, like, yeah, real like jokey line. Up, yeah. Where Deacon goes like, maybe he doesn't answer to Chuck, call him Charles. Charles! Uh, but yeah, Jack Black accidentally blows up the boss's boat. And he's... Fine, the rest of the, like, Jack Black never gets any repercussions for this. <laughs> he never gets reprimanded. You can't punish your cousin. I get, yeah. that's the thing. Deacon actually likes these people. Because <laughs> usually, like, Lord Humongous and Road Warrior. And, yeah, he's not, like, killing his own guys or, or yeah, punishing anybody. Like, or... like, yeah, and, like, Road Warrior and them, like, they don't feel like they would, like, they don't want to kill their own guys, but at the same time, they wouldn't, like, feel bad about yeah, it. But there care. are other bad movies where, like, I'm so bad, I kill my own man. Darth Vader. Yeah. It's just killing dudes left mm -hmm. and right. But Deacon's like, oh, buddy, you shot my ship. All right, get in the plane. Yeah. <laughs> they're, just, they're just bros. Yeah, he's more mad at the Mariner because he yeah. loses an eye. <laughs> yeah. Because of his own, you know, it's like, yeah. okay, I mean, whatever. I guess you can't be mad at your cousin, like you said. <laughs> But yeah, the Mariner uh, gets away. Deacon survives. And, um, Blood is thicker than water. Yeah. <laughs> That's the tagline for the yeah. movie, right? <laughs> no, that was the tagline. That should be the sequel. For, that was yeah. the tagline water for world, Halloween Blood H2O. Is thicker oh, than water. H2O. Now we're all Which, cousins. by the way, <laughs> that expression is not what it means. 
it uh because people are like that means family oh, yeah. but actually the origin of that expression means like the blood in the battlefield is stronger than the water of the womb so basically it means the opposite like the people mm. you fight with mm. are stronger than family is yeah. what i heard Interesting. what i heard it's funny how that expression has evolved over the time and on that note i'm gonna go recycle some hydro <laughs> do you really need to be yeah, oh, okay <laughs> Do you remember where the bathroom is? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Mm. How was that hydro? That was delicious. <laughs> I, thanks for bringing some back for me. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you for... It looks like that was actually I've filtered. Got or you, have a, you, guys, you guys want some? Or, I, mean, no, I'm okay. I, I, I figured out money. the filtration system. So <laughs> good. everything's it's good. good. Um, so yeah, they're pillaging the atoll. Uh, Deacon is sad that they haven't gotten a big score in a while. <laughs> They're like, there used to be atolls everywhere. What happened? I think his bookkeeper's like, well, we took out a, a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's kind of their fault. The mariner realizes he doesn't have enough resources, and he's ready to just toss the little girl oh, off the yeah. boat. None of this is believable. I never believe that he's that ruthless. I know the movie yeah. wants us to think he's that ruthless. I definitely understand why you would in, in a realistic situation, but I don't yeah. know if it's because it's Kevin Costner yeah. or whatever, but I'm like, well, more more for me, I think it's because they are ripping off Mad Max, and Mad Max wouldn't do that, really. Yeah. Mad Max would do some pretty rough things, but... But you know the adult woman's going to take more resources than the child. Uh, yeah. 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 That, that, that is a plot hole. <laughs> also, can he not drink seawater if he has gills? I assume he I would be... I was wondering that. That's very confusing like... that his evolution would let him... Breathe underwater, but not be sustained by seawater. Mm. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's almost as if they didn't think that through. And I think we brought this up in the Peg Warmers episode. Mm, we might have. If he's a mammal, he wouldn't have gills. He would have a blowhole. Like, yeah. that would be the thing. He would have a blowhole. But anyway, he'd also probably have 300, 500 pounds of blubber to keep he, him floating. He could probably make a fortune just if he drank water, peed it out, purified it he could just be a one man purification machine just (laughs) gallons at a time yeah um really ridiculous uh so yeah she's trying to offer things to keep them on board and then she offers her body up to him and then she's like uh elinola go down there And an she's old pl- a gorgeous lady. Yeah, she, by the way. Very, she, very sexy lady. I thought it was funny. I'm like, okay, so the only thing holding this dress together uh-huh. is just one little clip. She, like, clips it. It just falls right away. I'm like, oh, that was really fast. Uh-huh. And again, the scene's uncomfortable. It reminds me It reminds yeah. me of Conan the Barbarian where they're, like, forcing Conan to breed with people. Uh-huh. But, like, yeah, again. I just, the movie keeps wanting to trick you into thinking he's a bad guy, but since I know it's a Mad Max ripoff and Mad Max wouldn't do this, I can never believe it. Well, I feel like there's a bunch of stuff that, like, they almost go there, and they're like, this is very dark. Yeah. But it's like, you don't have to imply, like, prostitution or anything else. If you're not going to show any of it, like, it's not a possibility. This is not the world. You don't have to have that in the world. It's totally fine. You don't have to be like. Also, I'll, I'll, let's also do wasn't a this supposed to be like a fun action thing? adventure for the family? Wasn't that how they were marketing well, it? Well, that's kind what of? I mean. Like, if you're gonna go dark, go super dark. Like the road with Viggo Mortensen. You ever see that depressing uh-huh. film? Jesus Christ, that is a movie where the dad will do some dark things. Like when he. But if if, if, yeah. you, if you're gonna have action figures. Yeah, yeah. You don't. I'm re- still disappointed. There's no Helen action figure. <laughs> I know, especially for. Clothes dropping action. Yeah. We're clothes be dropping action. <laughs> uh yeah. Yeah, you know, you don't put like weird uh stuff like that in your film where you're yeah. selling toys. <laughs> That's just me. I don't know. <laughs> Quick sex action. <laughs> <laughs> your dress comes um, off with one button press. So it ends up not happening. Yeah. Uh he turns her down. She tries to shoot him, but then he outsmarts her with hitting her with the sail. He and then okay, smacks her with an oar, okay, man. this oh, one is like all right. So good. she's down and out. He's made his point, but no, he like gets the oar. He hits her. I'm like, well, she's dead. Like, this you're not getting up from that. Yeah. That, that looked like a really hurt. So maybe he is a bad guy because that was kind of a bad thing to do. He's got to punish her. Gotta it show was her. Just we're, Kevin Costner. You know what we should do? Yeah, he drops the he drops the sail on her. That's great. Yeah, 
But let's just like when she's covered up, let's just pretend it's my ex wife. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna take this paddle and I'm just gonna beat her a couple <laughs> times over the head. And um just make me feel a little better. It'll make everyone's day a little nicer because I'm <laughs> not so grumpy. So we get the uh the Exxon Ver what was Exxon Valdez, Valdez. Yeah. yeah, which is a huge like oil tanker ship. I guess that happened like right before this movie. Very so fit. Like, very, in in, in yeah. the very late age, I think at nineteen eighty nine, yeah. yeah, it leaked oil all over the place. This is oh, like okay. when you see the baby duck covered in oil, uh, that's where the footage came from. Yeah. This was oh, like easy. the hugest environmental disaster yeah. in oh, my home. childhood. Sorry, sorry, one one sec, one second, one second. Hello? Hello, my name is Chris. I was calling to make sure that you received the invitation that we mailed out last week. Oh, what what what, what was the invitation to? Yeah, the invitation was in regards to that 2024 owners update meeting for your vacation property. Uh, did you not receive it? Uh, no. See, I watched this movie called Waterworld, and it told me that soon the ice caps are going to melt, and my waterfront property is going to mean nothing uh, because it's on the coast and it'll just be underwater. So I just sold it. Oh, do you not own a vacation property or a timeshare? Not anymore. I got rid of it because of this film, Waterworld. Have you seen it? Kevin Costner's in it. No worries. We'll go ahead and remove your name and number from our list. I mean, yeah, go ahead. But no, have you seen Waterworld with Kevin Costner? Can you talk to me about it? Uh, I've never seen that movie, sir. Oh, Dennis Hopper's in it. Uh, That guy from Seinfeld. Uh, You would really love it. Would you like to keep talking about Waterworld? Can you give me your number so I can call you about Waterworld later? We can talk about that movie you've never seen. Like, you want to talk to me about a property I don't own. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> where were we? <laughs> All the time. They're always doing that. I couldn't crazy. tell if that was a bit or not. <laughs> no, if I, if, no, that's a rule on the show. If I get a spam call on okay. the show, I'm answering All the right. phone. <laughs> I've done that many times. <laughs> I was shocked that that was a real person. It just person. worked yeah. so well, though, because it that tied into the waterfront. I, when it's, so when it's amazing. A, when it's a real person. Could you imagine yeah. the scheduling? <laughs> hey, just no, about... I thought he just had a recording on his phone okay, that he was playing. Yeah. Like, oh, it, like he no. this. <laughs> I was like, what? It's oh. not as fun as when it's a robot and you're trying to riff with a robot. Mm-hmm. They That's don't get hard angry. to do. Anyway. <laughs> Where was it? Oh, yeah. The Exxon Valdez. Uh, you said it was like yeah, the, the, the real big, thing. big environmental disaster. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it would, I guess, be outdone by BP in the 2000s. Yeah, I mean, that was the next time we had a giant oil leak. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even connect. I knew there was an oil tanker that leaked mm, oil. Yeah. I just didn't realize what the name that's was. That's the ship. Okay, yep. that's yeah. actually clever yep. then. Um, and I know that because in Seinfeld, Kramer's trying to come up with a rubber lining oh. for oil tankers. Uh, but speaking of a different 90s oh. show, there's a bumper sticker that says Nuke the Whales. <laughs> and I'm like, did that exist before or after The Simpsons? And where did that Simpsons episode air in relation to this? Because remember, what's his name? Who's the bully uh, um, in The Simpsons? Nelson. 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 Yeah. He has a Nuke the Whales poster. And I'm like, did they? Wh- who got this from who? Who knows? Um the smokers find out they're on they're low on oil and they find this out from the guy in the pit who has the worst the old guy oh man yes. i feel so bad for this him. guy and the bookkeeper guy are just great yeah. little bit characters yeah. he's just his job is to just sit in the oil tank and yeah. measure how much oil they we have got four feet nine and a half <laughs> inches i love where he goes good day or night whatever the case may be <laughs> good morning or night, whichever the case may be. <laughs> and then they just leave him. And I love how, like, nonchalant, what you call it, uh, Deacon is. First off, he drives a car in the boat. Yeah. Like, crashing into things. And then he's, like, lighting a cigarette. And by the way, later on, you, you see a clear sign on the ship that says no smoking. Because it's a fucking oil he's tanker. He's smoking and throwing cigarettes the whole time. It's yeah, so that's the thing. At one point, he throws it. And the guy grabs the lid to cover the thing because they're all going to die. It's like, think fast. Yeah. You <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> oh. oh my god! All right. Um, so yeah, they're low on the go juice. They need more. Where are they gonna get more though? That's the real question. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I like that they make a point for what you would call it, Mariner, to explain why he doesn't just use seawater. Yeah. He's like, it's bad. The salt water's bad it's on the machines. Bad like, for the gears. And, and again, if I was them, I'd be like, you have gills. Can't you just drink? The it's salt hard water? on the filter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's hard on the filter. <laughs> 
I'm like, well, at least I guess they were explaining it. They wanted us to know that they thought about yeah. it. And then the Ulysses cut has uh, an additional scene where he collects all three of their pee. Yes. And then filters it and then drinks almost all of it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it gives it to a plant before he gives it to yeah. them. Um, oh, okay. The ADR is where it's real noticeable here. Because, mm. by the way, so they're d- definitely in the mic, not talking how they normally would. But if you listen to the sound effects of the ocean, it's like, shh, it's real calm. Meanwhile, you look at the ocean and they're clearly like moving. The uh. waves are like real rapid. They're like, no way it fucking sounded <laughs> like that. I'm like, I can see the waves. They are rough. They would be making a lot more <laughs> noise. This is my boy. I got it the way I like it. Take up space and you slow me down. Mariner gets annoyed by the little girl, throws her all overboard, and then Helen follows. I, I really want to rewatch the uh, theatrical cut because I'm like, how much? This seems like there's so much more of him like tossing her and smacking her. Yeah, they again, like, there's way too many scenes of him being like, is he a bad mm-hmm. guy or is he not? And like by the end. When we get to the third act, it's like, oh, God damn it. Just we know he's a good guy. Yeah. Stop teasing us. They, they, they could have used a stronger scene. It just uh, it's all the same scene trying to like establish. It pretty much character. is like, oh, he's going to uh, get rid of the is. girl. But it's like, well, he just tried to do that like two scenes ago. So, yeah, uh, they get circled by a smoker. And then I saw Jack Black and I'm like, I can't believe he wasn't fired. <laughs> <laughs> he got promoted to airplane pilot, yeah. I guess. Um, Helen takes out the shooter. Which I thought was impressive. That was pretty good, yeah. But then nice she, shot. she doesn't understand that, like, we're kind of tethered to. The yeah, it's kind of tethered to the thing, <laughs> so they lose the harpoon gun during this battle. Um, Could have been an awesome finale weapon. Yeah, that, that would have been. Have one later, like yeah. a weird yeah. grappling hook gun thing. <laughs> it uh, gets tangled in the sail. Jack Black <laughs> is able to like cut it free. Uh, during this, the Mariner like falls in the water, and he's like not happy, and he like just chops her hair <laughs> off. As like a punishment. I, I was wondering if that was uh if that was like a continuity thing. Like it's been uh months and months. We have to put her in this wig. The only wig we could find is a shitty little short one. <laughs> uh, how about he just cuts their hair off? Yeah. Because yeah. the girl has the, the little girl has short hair for the rest of the movie too. Yeah, I guess she, she cuts and her like, hair to match. That looks like an awful wig. <laughs> Oh, I forgot to mention a few scenes ago, they try to give Deacon a new eye, and it looks terrible. <laughs> like, all of the adults are lying to him, and then the kid's like, nah, it looks like shit. It looks it's like, like shit. It's literally like, how does my eye look? <laughs> and they're like, oh, it looks great. Yeah. It looks beautiful. He's like, that's why I love kids. They'll tell you the truth. So, yeah, by the way, Deacon wants to find land so he can build a golf course. Because he loves golfing. That is and the funniest like, thing. He's always dreamed of a guy. He talks yeah. about land as if he's seen it. Like, he knows t- <laughs> knows it too well. Yeah. Well, he does have the... And I don't know if this is the same thing with the theatrical mm-hmm. or whatever. He's got a big poster of a golf course. Yeah. We can have 18, 32, 65 holes or whatever he's saying. <laughs> like, it's so crazy. I mean, I, is it I possible that he's seen land when he was a kid? Well, I think it's just he's been staring. I don't know. I guess yeah, I it's just, just it's the like, National Geographic stuff. I, I, that, that, that is a big boat. They probably have a ton of magazines yeah, and maybe. books and stuff in there. So he's probably seen enough visuals of it. That mm-hmm. It's so hard to tell. Like, they talk about the ancients, but yeah. yet... They have all the modern stuff we have, so it's yeah. so hard to tell like how yeah. long the world. There's really no been like flooded. future technology. Like, um, if you ever played the video games, those Horizon games are actually pretty good I at that. I never played them. Well, yeah. they show like there's like you see like old vehicles, like okay. cars and buildings, but then you see like futuristic stuff yeah. that would have happened after our time. Um, I mean, I don't play those games. Video games are for children. Nerds, anyway, nerds, play nerds. Those. They collect toys and they exactly. play video games. Exactly, they, they collect the toys. Nerds oh, collect worst. toys. There's other nerds that like Could movies. You imagine to- somebody having all of the Waterworld toys, <laughs> every <laughs> single one of them, even the 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 Trimoran. Ridiculous. <sighs> Man, that'd ridiculous. be like... Th- and then leaving them in the baggage? Like, come on. <laughs> the only thing oh, more ridiculous gross. than that is having a shrine to Alien 3. But we gotta <laughs> continue with Waterworld here. Let's get back to that. Oh, man. Uh, self-aware. <laughs> <laughs> that whole section, at least in the Ulysses cut, mm. I was like, okay, this is got, this I really liked. I was like, this is like beautiful, beautiful shots. Mm. Amazing scenes. 
where Dennis Hopper is gone like for a long time. Yes. It's just like, okay. The scene right. with the the, the grape. It's romantic. And yeah. He's the, teaching people to swim. And, the grape okay. tomato probably could have been trimmed down. Yeah. It's like, I get the point of the scene. I know where it's going. Mm-hmm. Didn't need to be this long. I think that there's the one where he's like cutting up the tomato. Yeah. And they're like. <laughs> yeah, they're slowly inching, and then there's like nothing but juice left. Then think, he licks the juice. Yeah, there's it's ridiculous. Like, see, he, <laughs> that's that like, stuff makes him seem like an asshole yeah. more so than the other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, then then the movie gets uncomfortable. They come across another drifter. Yeah. Uh, Kim Coates' character, who's like definitely insane. He hasn't seen anyone in a long time. Uh, I like how his so his uh outfit is made of of the plastic stuff for like soda cans. Uh-huh. It's like all strapped together. Because in the 90s, they were complaining about that was in the ocean. It was killing mm-hmm. the turtles. Yeah. But this guy seemed to get all of them. So I mean, he the must have been collecting around them. saving them all. So, yeah, they come across this drifter. He has paper. 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 Oh, have you ever seen paper? Look at him. Whoa. And it's written in, like, the, the same language that her the mm-hmm. girl's tattoos are. Uh, so they're interested in that. So he wants to trade the paper for the women. And I guess Helen gets offered to him. Well, he, he's like, uh, half hour for the woman. Yeah. And he's like, mm, or 45 for the girl. I'm like, what the? F- <laughs> it's what a post apocalypse. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Cause like he's like, I, gonna I, live like longer. I like to talk, you know, a little talking. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and again. This is the second it's like out of nowhere. This is the second like non-consensual thing in the movie so yeah. far. And I'm like, man, this is real uncomfortable. Like, yeah. and again, if this was a movie, like I said, The Road or something where uh-huh. it's meant to make you uncomfortable and show you how bad humanity is, I can get it. But this is a movie where a guy bungee jumps um, and flies around on planes <laughs> and people are drinking pee. Yeah. This isn't the movie I would put this dark kind of material in. That's just me. I don't know about you guys. Well, um, that goes on for so long. Like, yeah, like, that's the other thing. The scene ever. is like building up and it's like, uh, so like she's down there. He's being all creepy and scary. And yeah. then meanwhile, Kevin Gosser's up there and you're just waiting for him to do the right thing. Mm. But it's dragged out so much. I'm like, I don't like this. It's not building tension. It's just creeping me out. Well, like, that's what I think after a certain point, it stops building tension. You're like, okay, he's crazy. But he never gets like crazy, crazy. You're mm. like, oh, yeah. No, he's a cannibal. Like, that's what I kept thinking when I was rewatching. Like, no, he just wants to get oh, laid, but he's I think I weird. see, like, is he going to go down, down? And then Kevin Costner goes over the boat and like you, there's human remains or something like that. He's clearly been cooking. Yeah. You'd be like, oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. And then Kevin Costner takes him out. I was like, nope, he's just going to no, sit here and have Kevin a Co- awkward conversation. Instead, Kevin Costner's him. like, I changed my mind. I yeah, don't want to sell the girl to you. It's like, okay. Yeah. How noble of you to change your mind on selling a human being that you, a decision you made 40 minutes ago and now have changed. Well, then later he... He's going to sell them to slavers. Yeah, that's the weird like, thing. He's still thinking of selling them. Okay. All right. Uh, Twist. Okay. Spoilers for that. But yeah, they get into a fight. I do like the fake out where you think mm-hmm. uh, the crazy guy sur- like is, won the fight, but yeah. then he gets up and his back's all bleeding and he falls over. Uh, they just toss him. They grab the few things they need from him and they toss his ass in the water. That's so messed up. <laughs> Unceremoniously, they're like, get in there. Mm. He doesn't get a whole song and prayer like the lady who got fed to the plant. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, just an uncomfortable scene. Probably would have cut that out. I don't know if that's in the theatrical I, cut. I Do you remember this cut scene? That short. I mean, it, it, so I think that it's in there, but I don't think all of it is in there. Maybe. Yeah. If there was any, if I was in the editing room and I had to be like, in charge of making changes I'm like yeah can you trim this one down a bit this is a little dark buddy we literally had a theme park stunt show a few uh-huh. scenes ago we don't need this yeah the there's a whole when they go down he's like oh, oh. he's like tapping the bed i'm like oh god I'm like All right, so we're gonna just watch her undress <laughs> awkwardly he's, yeah hey, oh, half, hour, half hour with you <laughs> kim Coates always plays a weirdo i feel like i feel yeah. like i've seen him in so many movies as like a weirdo the mariner uh, he pretends to be bait because they're talking about how they need like food. That w- I did not remember that scene at all. He, I was like, "This is friggin' cool." He, he's bait badass. for a giant fish monster. Yeah. And then that made me realize, I'm like, 
don't think we've seen any sea life in this. I don't think we've seen no. a bunch of like fish or anything. Like that would have been cool to know, like what happened to the wildlife in the ocean. Yeah, Apparently, the, uh... s- giant mutant sea monsters exist. Yeah. I'm like, it could have just been a shark, and that would have been impressive. But what? Is, what is this thing? We never like get the, a good uh, look at it either. The was it atoll or whatever? The, whatever that floating no. monstrosity of a base. Yeah. They have like a shark there that's okay. like hanging up, but and that thing looks a little weird. I'm like, that yeah. would have been awesome. Just a regular shark or a big shark. Yeah, or... I know it would have been like. There's a scene later where he's underwater. It would have been cool to see things floating around down there. But yeah, yeah. that was the only hint we get at like what happened to sea life. Apparently, some of them became mutated. Just got weird. Well, you know, the toys. Yes. Had cut, it's cut scene, but oh. all their little mutant buddies <laughs> were really going to be in the movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. They, they did come with those little mutant those guys. Little mutant toys. Little pack I totally forgot about that. I confused and that I with Stargate those... where they came with the little relics. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty funny, though. <sighs> we need we need to remake this movie and put those fish back in. Yeah. It. Um we didn't have the budget for the CGI. <laughs> we spent was, it on uh, rebuilding the ASOL. I forget how much they said each scene that had CGI at the time cost like thirty six thousand dollars. Jeez. I don't know if he meant the, the director, somebody. They meant scene or shot. Oh because I was assuming it was the sh- every shot. Yeah. yeah. The, sh- the shot of the CGI whatever it is. There's a decent amount of CG in this. Not overboard, yeah. though. Apparently, this is the first movie, according to the production, uh, the director, whoever it was, the first movie that had CGI water. They oh. beat Titanic to it because <laughs> they did the, it with you, J- James Cameron. <laughs> you're a hack. <laughs> <laughs> the Valdez, uh, they were like, you know, this is the one thing. Let's just build it on a, on a parking lot. Let's do a parking lot. Not That's why water. it looked weird. Okay, yeah. it did look a little weird. And apparently, like they did uh, the top, like the yeah. whatever the deck of the ship was just on a parking lot. Everything else was on a sound stage. I thought that was like interesting because I'm like, yeah. that is a very impressive set. How they get that on the water? But yeah. now I just realized they're not in the water. It's smart um, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so they start to bond a little bit. Him and the little girl. And the Mariner's putting some music on. He found a CD player and some... I thought that was really cool. Like, there's some stuff... That from... is, until you find out where he's getting this shit, and you're yeah. like, that wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah, the like, salt to, to have just... the batteries, to have the device. Yeah, yeah. the salt the speakers, would destroy that everything. so yeah. long. <laughs> well, I think he has a power source. He has a little windmill thing, I think. Okay, yeah. so he's got that the power, but, like, but still... the paper cone in the speakers, like... Yeah. Wouldn't work. Yeah. Underneath the water, the salt water, the pressure, none of that stuff's lasting. Um... Because what you call, we talked about it recently, like the Titanic, a lot of things of the Titanic are now just like dissolving mm-hmm. over time. So the ocean eats away at that shit. Uh, so yeah, the one thing I notice about this scene, I feel like some of it is on a stage. Oh, I'm sure. But then they'll cut Hopefully. to then they'll cut to overhead shots of them in the water, and the water's way too late. I'm like, this is a day for night shot, isn't it? <laughs> And like it looks like the sun's coming up, but then it cuts. I, I like when I first saw it when they cut to that overhead shot. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, there's been a passage of time, and now it's gonna be morning. But then it cuts back to them still talking. I'm like, what was that obvious day for night shot? I'm like that was really yeah. bothered me. Not the worst day for night I've ever seen. Cruel Jaws. They're just <laughs> filming in the middle of the day, and they put a lazy blue filter on it. They're like it's nighttime. Like no, I can see the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that really bothered me, that shot. Yeah. So yeah, the, the Mariner teaches uh, Nola how to swim. I like that whole thing. They're like, I've never met anyone who didn't know how to swim before. Because in this <laughs> world, this water world, you need to know how to swim. Uh-huh. Uh, it's almost as if she grew up on land. Oh my goodness. Conspiracy. <laughs> Conspiracy. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is an example of a scene that goes on way too long. Yeah. It's like, I get it. He's bonding with her. Cool. But then it constantly like cuts to Helen like this. Rawr, he's teaching her how to swim. What a nice Yeah, ride. yeah. And then like the swim in the slow motion. Like, okay. He's a good dad. I might jump his uh-huh. bones okay. later. Okay. Are we done? The, oh, we're still This reminded me of uh, Terminator 2. Which <laughs> yeah. Like, Watching him like mm-hmm. high-fiving him. With yeah. Her. And that was the scene they cut down for the theatrical uh-huh. cut. They cut out him smiling. James, James Cameron, you're not a hack. You're smarter than Waterworld. <laughs> also, I've reviewed both Terminator 2 and Titanic. Go back and check out those episodes. Yeah, there was oh. a lot of stuff like that. Like It was beautifully shot. I was watching it, and I'm like, that was the moment where I'm like, okay, that scene ended. And I was like, how fucking long is this yeah. movie? 
oh, oh. how long is it? It's, it? I was like, okay, it's really, but I was like, in the moment, I'm like, this is really well shot. It yeah. is really well done. It's shot well. It was just after Other a than that day for night like, shot, it's shot well. I'm like, there's no, where'd the deacon go? What happened? Well, like, don't I worry. I expect him to show up. I'm like, oh. Don't worry, God. he's back. So the smokers, <laughs> they, they figure out where he's going. They're like, they, I like deacons is like, he knows if we spotted him, he'll assume that we assumed he'll change course, which means he's staying on his current course. Yeah. Inconceivable. Yeah. I don't think that word means what you think it means. <laughs> <laughs> My friend Adam has finally watched that movie for the first time. Uh, it's about Princess time. Bride. Yeah. Yeah. It's about time. Um, so, yeah, he gets to the uh, outpost. Now, the smokers could have killed all those people and worn their clothes. Mm-hmm. The smokers thought it was smarter <laughs> to kill home them. Alone. Yeah, oh. prop them up and yeah, like home alone, make them like wave or like we get at Bernie's. Yeah. And make them like they're sitting there and they're like this. Like, what are they been smarter to just dress up like them? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> really we need the hardcore gruesome scenes because uh-huh. we gotta show this world is gritty. I the guy guess. Like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> So stupid. <laughs> oh, it's crazy um, how much thought and like weird, yeah. weirdness like is in this movie. It's just insane. <laughs> so yeah, the smokers are surrounding them uh, and they're throwing all the traps they can. And meanwhile, Kevin Costner and all them are running to each side of the boat, <laughs> propping it up. They're leaning. They're working <laughs> their asses off. <laughs> uh, they get out of range, but uh, what you call it? Uh, Deacon's able to get one shot on and the mm-hmm. ma- Mariner hits him in the side. Uh, but yeah, then Helen and the Mariner admit that they've been lying to each other. She's like, you were going to sell us. You're going to sell us to the slavers. Yeah. And he's like, well, you didn't tell us that you might have a map to dry land. Like actual. He's like, I was lying about dry land. You're saying it actually is real. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, she basically asked him. She's like, "You have to have been dryland. Where are you finding all this stuff?" He's like, "Well, I'll show you." Yeah, and he puts her in his makeshift scuba thing. It's pretty cool. I mean, Question uh, though: Why does he have one? I was wondering the same thing. Sorry. Like, uh, did he he used to have a best friend that didn't have gills, and his best Wait. friend would use the diving bell. He must have. But you know, Maybe. his friend died at some point, and so <laughs> now Helen. Well, gets he was it. like very upset that the girl was playing with those crowns. Yeah. Uh, Crayons, sorry, my Northeast Philly snuck Man, out. Man, I love drawing with crowns. <laughs> my Northeast Philly snuck I out a put little my bit. My crayon on my head because I'm yeah. the king. Yeah, no, crayons is what I called them. Crayons. I thought there was gonna be a thing like like Mad Max, like that belonged to my first uh, kid, but yeah. I don't think they ever go there. Yeah, I don't think. I wonder if that was some like something they were thinking about and it just didn't. <laughs> Maybe they make, were like, "That's too obvious." Didn't make it into the final script. Or <laughs> they're something. like, they're, "That's uh, a little too obvious." Yeah. So yeah, he has this scuba device, and I think I mentioned on the show before. I went to um, the scuba museum down in the Florida Keys, mm. and what I learned was, up until like twenty years ago, uh, deep sea stuff was the scariest thing in the world, and I don't know why humans kept failing the need to do it. Like I looked at the old devices, I'm like. No chance in hell would I've ever gotten in that death trap. <laughs> um, well, People think... got in like a private submarine oh. just a couple years ago. And... Well, okay, well that's <laughs> okay. Know? That thing was that's the scariest di- thing. That's oh, a different kind man. of stupid. If the military put me in a submarine, yeah. I'd be like, "Well, I trust your right. submarine. Yeah. I don't trust this guy's submarine." <laughs> but this is before all that, where people uh. were like. Maybe this will work. I'm like, well, can we test it on something else? <laughs> Wouldn't Jesus it be Christ. nice to see what's under the water? <laughs> I'd be like, not enough to get in that fucking thing. Uh, so, yeah, he brings her underwater. They just leave the young girl up top. Well, what could possibly go wrong? What could go yeah, wrong? Could possibly... They've only been attacked multiple times. Don't what touch anything, wrong? kid. I'll be right back. Yeah. Don't you draw with my crayons. So they're down there. Um, <laughs> and this scene, uh, effects-wise... Is hit or miss. Some of it looks bit. really good. Some of the, the miniatures when it, there's not floating Kevin Costner. Yeah, floating Kevin Costner is not really funny. well integrated into it. He's but a little. The, those miniatures are gorgeous. Yeah, some of them are shot oh, really, really man. nice, and then others are shot like I feel like I'm looking at a sunken model train like, thing. Wow, cool. <laughs> that was the yeah. downside with miniatures. Like miniatures were like mm-hmm. he had a fifty-fifty chance it would either look great or it would look like a toy train set. Yeah. 
I do love the. Uh, there's one shot of the submarine. Yeah. The sunken submarine in the city. I'm like, yeah. That's fucking cool. That is so nice. But this could have been a good place for them to put like some sea life, uh, some yes. like Anything. sharks and stuff going around. Even like little puppet ones. Yeah. Do something. Just a couple fish. A school yeah. fish. Yeah. A hundred percent. Now they would have like bioluminescent oh, yeah. uh, fish underneath, a little bit yeah. like Aquaman or something. Uh, but it's a cool idea. I like that underneath the city is there. I have issues with the geography later on uh, when we find out where the mainland is. But anyway, I'm yeah, like, what city was that? Uh, Denver. Colorado? Yes. <laughs> Are you just pulling no, out? No, I watched the, in, the, in, the, uh, <laughs> in the documentary I watched, they said like, yeah, we based it on Colorado or Denver. I was like, why Den? Why Denver? <laughs> well, that would have been one, one of the places. last places in the U.S. maybe to get flooded. Maybe, yeah. Maybe it's yeah, a high point in the center of the country. Oh, I guess yeah. maybe it makes sense because if realistically, if you're like, well, let me bring you to the bottom, what you wouldn't want to be like Pennsylvania. Here we go. <laughs> here's, here's the first place and the deepest place. Yeah. yeah. So he's bringing her down there. <laughs> Somehow she doesn't get the bends. Um, but yeah, they get up and she's like, wow. I never knew. It's, I'm like, I feel like you could have just told her. Yeah, you, I, you know what? Like, There's dirt down there. Buddy. Seeing is believing. Yeah, sure. True. But I feel like he could have been like, "Look, let me take you down and show you." All right, do you see it? Okay, we're going back up. Instead, he's like, "No, I need to like float you around." It's not like. There's a young girl up there who's like the most <laughs> important person on the fucking planet oh, yeah. that we're leaving unattended, and sure enough, the smokers are already <laughs> there. Uh, they take Enola and they trash the Mariner's boat, uh, and the Mariner and Helen high underwater. <laughs> Awkward moment to put like a romance thing. Like he's giving her oxygen. <laughs> yeah. I'll breathe for both of us. Hell and I get it. I get it. <laughs> and she's like, wow, I'm in love. I'm like, she shouldn't be thinking about that right now during uh-huh. the girl being kidnapped. Like this is an awkward place. To put that scene. Yeah. Tony, you've seen movies. When <laughs> girls get rescued by guys, they fall in love. This is no, how it works. I agree, but not during the scene where someone is being taken away. She should that should be like on the <laughs> forefront of her mind. I was I was sitting there while I'm like, what would this is so unrealistic? I'm like, what would this be like? I'm like, I was eating a sandwich. I'm like, what if somebody came up to me, like if I was in public? And somebody just start taking my pants and be like, whoa, whoa. Uh, you're still sandwich. eating the sandwich. It's really good. Again, if oh, this was a comedy. This is so fresh. If this was a comedy, I wouldn't have mind it. But it's not like, really a comedy. I was sitting there like, what? You? I mean, even that, I'd be like, hey, stop pulling up my pants. And I'd stop <laughs> eating a sandwich. They're stealing, your, basically, your adopted daughter. Yeah. And she's like. Wow. Your fish breath tastes delicious. <laughs> like, it's like, I don't know what. Uh, so back oh, on yeah. the uh, the headquarters, Deacon is trying to negotiate with Enola to figure out like what the markings mean. Yeah, I love that there are sparks dropping during this scene the whole time. Yeah, like, whole time. on this ship cool. that like you probably shouldn't be smoking yeah. on. There's yeah. like sparks. <laughs> but I like that he's just like, look, you know, I got a lot of people here, and I need mainland to feed uh-huh. them. She's like, why don't you just have less people? <laughs> It's like, in our place, we only had, like, people when one person would die. And you look at him, he's like, no, nah, that's impossible. For us. So these people just can't stop having sex. Like, they well, have no intention of stopping. Himself, was it the Church of, of Endless uh, Growth or something? Yeah, yeah. Of Endless like, Growth or something. Okay. Uh, but he's just like, right. no, we're, we're not going to stop. A, is that like a jab at Catholics? Uh, I was maybe, wondering about that. Because I'm, I'm Catholic. So I was like... Now, now I'm thinking of the scene of Monty Python's Meaning of Life. Yeah, <laughs> like the, every sperm count. Yeah, but the, remember the scene where like the what you call it the uh, was it the Protestants are making fun of fun of them, and then like the the Catholics next door, like there's a million kids. The whole scene goes on for five minutes, and there's just a never ending row of kids <laughs> in the house. Anyway, different oh, movie. Oh man, much better movie. Monty Python Meaning of Life. My favorite Monty Python movie, actually. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Anyway, it compares to Waterworld. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, they they won't stop boning, but don't worry, Helen and the Mariner are gonna start boning again. Awkward place for a sex scene. Well, we're gonna die, so <laughs> just like in Game of Thrones, we might as well get it on before we die. And she's like, "Why didn't you sleep with me earlier?" He's like, "Cause <laughs> that would have been wrong." And she's because like, "Consent is sexy." Yes. You, I could tell yes. you didn't really want me. Yeah. Mm. It's like, uh, when you're selling someone, that's a whole different thing. But, 
Uh, I'd but then she's like, sell you, but I wouldn't have. <laughs> but she's like, you. yeah, guy who almost took advantage of me and tried to sell me to multiple <laughs> slavers. I'm into you. Maybe yeah. it's Stockholm syndrome. I don't it know. Could be. I don't know. It might be the 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 most attractive man she's met in a couple of years. Like, <laughs> whew, he's a very handsome man. You can uh, sell me into slavery and anytime. I, I assume he has human genitals. I assume. It, oh, I, it does ask a few questions. I was wondering that. Well, questions. he does. He doesn't go like, "Well, lay your eggs and I'll fertilize them." It's like, <laughs> oh no, that's not how it works with humans. That would be so. <laughs> I want to see that deleted scene. Just like, that awkward, like I don't, I don't, uh, I don't think that's how this works. He's like, <laughs> she's like okay, no, yeah, yeah, like right, hold on, I'll go. I'm right. thinking like a beta fish. She's like, I'll go into water, I'll make a nest, and put your eggs there. She's like, no, honey, that's not how that <laughs> happens with you. You drop the eggs, I'll swim upstream. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> We're writing a better movie. I, uh, I, would... I want to remake Waterworld uh, that answers these types of questions. Can that be a segment at the end? We fix Waterworld. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Uh, so Gregor comes back. Hooray! <laughs> Hooray! Woo-hoo! He figured out his flying machine. This goofball. Uh, I would be so mad. I would if he came back and was like, "Oh, I found you!" Whoa! I'd be like, "Turn around." Get the hell out of here. I don't even want to look at you. You don't know how to fly the thing. You don't well, know now how to... he does. You're a, you're a, just get out of here. I'm so mad. But he finds the other survivors. That's true. Because what's your call? The, the security dude. The was able to yeah. yeah, he was able to leave. <laughs> um, no one wants to go back for Enola, not even the Mariner. I know. <laughs> not one person. It's a suicide mission. We can't yeah. do that. They're like, ah, oh, what a shame. What a hell of a thing. <laughs> well, let's go. <laughs> well, even when she comes back, the the same it's the same people who are like, I think we should just let that girl die. Yeah, like they're, they're like, like, we wanted her gone before uh, the smokers yeah. showed up. You think we're gonna go back for her? Now we have less people and less resources. Yeah, yeah, we don't need a child. And I have it in my notes. What is this? Like the fourth or fifth time the movie wants us to think he's a bad guy who's not gonna help? You gotta just keep making you believe that he's not a good guy. Well, I, I can't remember the theatrical. This is one in the Ulysses cut. They go to that little whatever. They have that conversation, and then he goes. He back goes back to his ship. To the I think uh, that's yeah, the, the tribe all yeah. broken up, and then he finds like her drawings. Yeah, he the look, palm tree. And yeah, stuff he looks like at that. the drawings and he cross references them with National Geographic. Yeah. Like, wait, she was drawing dry land this whole time, uh-huh. and she's never seen these. So then the smokers attack them. Yeah. He shows up and saves them. <laughs> he lets the guy know, uh, say, "Hey, your coordinates are upside down." Uh-huh. It's like you, you you're on the right track, but I've been mapping out the cities underneath, and uh, you're wrong. It's flipped, and he's like, "Oh, okay, I'll figure out how to get there." I guess. Which makes me wonder: Why is the tattoo on the girl upside down? That's a good question. Wait, were they holding a baby? <laughs> they, just hold still. I've almost finished the tattoo. It was one of those things Damn where, like, just t- they, stop they like start it and they're like, like "Oh, wait a minute! Oh, oh, oh I had it! Oh, the God. baby! I, don't I hope know. they figure it out." <laughs> I don't know about you guys. You ever change a, a baby's diaper? <laughs> yes, yes, I have. They, uh, like, yes. Would you stop moving, please? Yes, Could I'm you aware. Trying to tattoo a, a baby? child. And stop I, it. Just stop. Like, and the I arrow's babysit- going there. It's, oh, it's, it's beautiful. The shading's really nice. Just stop moving. <laughs> my, my nieces, they like to just grab things on the wall while it's uh. happening. And and like when I babysit, it's not just changing one time. I have to change them both at uh-huh. the same time half the time. <laughs> and I'm like, please stop moving. Please <laughs> stop moving for five <laughs> seconds. And just then wait, I just wait shake till them, they get old. Right? Would That's- you stop moving and stop talking? <laughs> just stop talking. Stop moving. Stop. Just stop. Just stop. Sweet molasses. I told you, just, just shake them. That that actually stops them. I learned. Oh. I don't know why that's not more more common practice. <laughs> you should make a PSA. I really should. <laughs> hey, is your baby cry? Just shake them. Uh. Uh, I was saying that to my brother. I was like, God, the girls are crying. I'm like, ah, oh, just shake them. It can't be that hard. Like, Son of a bitch. Oh. Uh, for YouTube, that was a joke. That was a very obvious joke. American Dad <laughs> made the same joke. <laughs> okay, anyway. okay, so they're like, uh, he's just like, I'm gonna go back and get Enola. Uh, I don't even care about Dryland. I just want to save her. And I like that they're like, 
where are you gonna find? How are you gonna find where the ship is? And he, I guess, this one jet ski it's was leaking, leaking oil the entire time, and the ocean didn't disperse this oil. It was uh-huh. stayed in a perfect line. And he throws like a Molotov cocktail that leads <laughs> to it. I'm like, this is so fucking stupid. Yeah. By the way, during the daytime, speaking of CGI, they have that <laughs> overhead shot. I have to freeze frame it. I might be wrong. <laughs> But I'm pretty sure he drives over the fire, and the fire is actually on top of him. And oh, it, maybe that's what it looked like. Well, I might like, like it Back to the Future with the uh, flames on. Yeah, Martin's yeah, feet, you know? the flames weren't in the right area. Yeah, I'll check. Maybe I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, I'll cut it out. You know what I love from this scene, though? I don't know if you guys noticed it, mm. but he throws a Molotov cocktail mm. in the water near the jet ski. <laughs> Yeah. It lights up that water and you can see the cameraman like it you suddenly see the rig that's holding the Oh jet really? Ski in like oh, it geez. just has an arm off the boat so it just holds the jet ski there. <laughs> well, I was I was oh, reading the camera great. crew had issues cuz they kept like drifting like they yeah. couldn't get the, they had to keep well, like, oh, it makes sense like you would anchor it to the the yeah. boat that you're on so yeah. you can film but it lights up the water and the cameraman goes, oh, and like <laughs> immediately like, he's right on the jet ski. The water lights up. He goes, ah, <laughs> like, frames it. so it's like sort of the jet skis over here and the flames are over here. It yeah. was like, oh, yeah, I got it. Was that like a, they only had one shot at that oh, shot? Yeah, it was yeah. like, uh, it was so funny. I was uh, laughing. I rewound it like three times. <laughs> so we find out uh, that Deacon, the, the St. Joe he's been mm. worshiping. It's just a picture of the captain. St. Joe, we're close. After centuries of shame. The yeah. ship's captain. Which I don't <laughs> know if that is the that, guy that from the 80s. The real, that is the real captain. That is the guy. real. I don't know if that, I think that picture is the real captain, but that is the captain's name. Oh, that that's That is the real funny. captain's name. Uh, oh, St. Joe. He, he said something like 200 years, or a couple hundred years of, of disgrace. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, he. Oh. they can't figure out what the tattoo is, but they're going to hype everyone up anyway. Because yeah. they assume they'll figure it out eventually. Uh, he does like a whole sermon. These people demand results. <laughs> yeah, he's doing a whole I sermon. I do like like people. stuff like that yeah. makes it feel like very, uh, I don't know, more, more full. Yeah, like it's uh, there's a lot of depth in the movie that you don't realize because it's very silly for the most part. Mm-hmm. But he is like a religious cult figure. Yeah, yeah. and he he's not very good at it. <laughs> he really is. There's a scene earlier where he's like. I forget what he's like talking about the calendar, the time going by, and no one's paying attention, and the book keeps. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was, yeah, he was talking about how like humans and fish uh-huh. can't be the same. Oh, okay. And, and no one knew that he like... was like demanding attention until the book. Yeah. Yeah. It was, that was so the whole funny. thing. So he's doing a whole sermon. Um, what you call it? The mariner pretends to be a smoker and sneaks on board. Uh, he just jet skis right in. And he kills a guy. Did, I was gonna ask, was that in that? Because I don't remember I don't that. Know. He uh, he rides a jet ski in. And they're like, okay, bring it in slow, bring yeah. it in slow. He launches in and <laughs> crushes this guy. And I, it has to be one of the effects, like the gore or whatever that was. He like Toned hit down. a dummy yeah. and it smashes yeah. into a wall. And then he's got a disguise on. And yeah, I guess all the people on the thing don't recognize each other. They're like, wow, you killed our cousin. And they're like, that guy was an asshole. Yeah, like, oh, you killed our boss. <laughs> and I'm pretty <laughs> I'm sure I'm pretty sure that one dude <laughs> is one, an actor from Seinfeld. But I also think he's one of the pirates in the Pirates is, of the Power yeah, yeah. yeah, he's a real phony, that guy. That um, rascal. Yeah, they just leave. They're like, huh, <laughs> the guy's dead. We're going to go on a break. Yeah. Goodbye. I quit. I mean, living in a world with that dilapidated of technology, I'm sure there's all kinds of safety hazards all the time. (laughs) Um, Okay, so this is weird. Enola starts hyping up the Mariner during like a sneaking. I thought that was pretty good. Like it was pretty good. This felt like I was watching like a trailer for the movie. That's what I thought. Well, maybe they needed some dialogue for that kind of thing. Maybe. Yeah. But she's like, he could do this. He could do that. I'm like. You've only known him for a week, and I don't think you've seen him do a lot of this stuff. What are you talking it's very, about? She um, might, she's kind of the smartest yeah. like person mm-hmm. in the movie, so is it she just sure. like trying yeah. to play up the superstition of like... It definitely <sighs> reminded me of Indiana Jones talking about um, Marcus. Is he talking oh, about? yeah. Like, he'll <laughs> disappear before you even know it. We Have reviewed that one too. Con- five, across five <laughs> continents, all that stuff. With like, with any luck, he's found yeah. the grill already. Hello, <laughs> does anyone speak English? <laughs> oh. Not only have I reviewed that one, 
We reviewed all the Indiana Jones movies Ooh. separately, and I also combined them into one big mega review. So check that out. Check those out if you want to hear me and Johanna talk for six hours about those movies. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, also, the Michael Keaton Batman movies. I put those into one big mega review. Batman, Batman Returns of the Flash. And we did a commentary track. We did a commentary track. Uh, okay, back to this. Um, yeah, so Deacon's speech is bullshit. I like that he's just sending the people to work. It's actually pretty clever. He's sending them, just getting them to go to work. Uh-huh. Uh, but on a script level, they were like, how are we going to get rid of all these guys? So I'm like, I know. this is clever. This is clever. Get well, the oars. I, I love I love the couple guys like we're tired of your your talk about dry <laughs> land or whatever they say <laughs> like they yeah. don't even believe him they're yeah. like oh, he's in charge okay what's he gonna say but i like that he's just like we'll figure out what it means we yeah. just gotta keep him busy in the meantime <laughs> <laughs> they'll row for a month before they stop <laughs> yeah um so yeah uh the mariner shows up and he demands <laughs> the girl or he'll blow up the ship and they don't believe him and then he blows up the ship and oh my god this death scene <laughs> Fucking the guy in the pit. I love when the that flame. So, yeah. <laughs> I love great. when the flame is coming, and he's just like, "Oh, thank God!" I like know. it's just one of those, just I like so bad for both. Like, oh, it's man. a great like quick cut to him. Yeah. Uh, oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank, thank God. God. Like it's just for him. It's just like it's finally over. Yeah. It's fine. I don't have to worry about this anymore. <laughs> and like all the guys down below the oars just all blow <laughs> up at once. I love they have great shots of the uh, the side of the building, like people shooting out, and whatever. Or's <laughs> going flying. Awesome. Um, I do like the. Um, it's not like the Dennis Hopper's like, wow, well, why would you do this? You're not crazy. Yeah. And the it's like a great scene that he's like, she's my friend. <laughs> yeah. But it's one of the things in movies that I it just drives me insane because like. There, it's a ship. There's the ocean. There's what? They're fifty feet away from each other at the least. And he's like, "She's my friend." Yep. Yeah, okay. It's like dramatic and oh wow, it's really great. He would be up there like, "What? Wait, huh? Two huh? movies have two what? movies have made fun of that trope. The one is Kung Fu Panda Two, okay. <laughs> where Poe is Never on top it, yeah. and he's Jack Black, and he's like, blah 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 blah, and it just cuts to the bad guy like hearing it muffle going what and then they do that joke again in the first shazam movie where they're flying in the air and the bad guy's like i will bring pain oh, when yeah. i shazam's like i'm too far away i can't hear you <laughs> so movie i'm surprised they don't make fun of that trope more often yeah it drives me nuts when that happens like there's machinery and they're like well i think we should just and i know it's just like the actors are on a quiet set yeah there might be machinery. It's like mechanical nonsense moving, but there's no, it's not real. Well, so my like, whole thing is he's doing this to save her. It's like, yeah, but what you just did could have killed her. And what he's about to do yes. will most surely oh, yeah. almost kill he her. He does make some reckless decisions here. Yeah. Uh, yeah is it like, he's like, he's never dealt with humans. Like, <laughs> would that kill a human? I don't, I don't know. Probably not. It wouldn't hurt me. I have had yeah. healing abilities yeah. and Oh, well, that's I'm right. Good. He recovered from that cut pretty well. Yeah, pretty he got well. shot, and then it was not an issue for yeah. the rest. He swam down <laughs> to the ocean, dragging what's-her-face. Yeah. So I like Blonde no Guy. <laughs> blonde Guy, he's just gone. He's just on a revenge mission now. He, like, steals the car. He yeah. crashes the car. <sighs> but then his undoing is because he didn't check if his gun was loaded. <laughs> Buddy. Buddy, you got to <sighs> check. I, you were just in a car accident. You're not thinking straight. He's, he's, he's got blood running down his face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah got so, a head injury. He's got, yeah, concussion for sure. <laughs> so he dies. The Mariner fucking zip lines down. And then he, like, gets another line, throws it on the plane. Because what's his face? Uh, but, uh, the Deacon. Deacon yeah. He's got a Nola to on the plane. Oh, yeah, with yeah. Nola. Uh, so he... Do you notice how that pontoon plane has these little tiny wheels on yeah, it? So yeah, they can turn it around on the deck. It's hilarious. Fucking um, the he crashes the plane. I'm like, yeah, but that could have really killed the girl. Like, yeah, seriously. What the fuck? I'm like, yeah, and then she's like, I'm fine. I'm like, she's how? Fine. How are you fine? Yeah, even though it's it's totally, absolutely unrealistic. Yeah. I do appreciate the, this whole thing it's so much practical i mean it's all yeah. basically practical 
and but how much of it is actually Kevin Costner like mm. zip lining, doing all this crazy nonsense? I'm like, this is this is badass action hero stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. This is what makes the movie so fun. Yeah. Again, fun makes action up. scene in the beginning, <laughs> fun action scene at the end. A lot of uncomfortable stuff in the middle. A lot of really uncomfortable. Yeah. It really kills the vibe. It makes up for all those hours at sea. <laughs> yeah. But I'm guessing I could see audiences being like, it took us a long time to circle mm. back to this. And then telling their friends, don't bother seeing the movie. Yeah. I can see like when you're watching at home, you can well, get the, up and whatnot. The tone is super weird. And yeah. Like, mm. But uh, the, what you call it? Um, Helen convinced Gregor to go back and rescue them. So they save them. Deacon tries to jump on. They knock him down into the water. He's able to shoot Enola out or like do something to cause Enola yeah. to fall out of the blimp. And then I alluded to it earlier. <laughs> Fucking Enola's in the water. Fucking the Mariner bungee cords. That was just a bungee cord they happen to have. And yeah. It's the most awkward. Here, tie this off. I know. <laughs> he, that is badass. He like tie this off and jumps and like. I sure hope that they... It's a leap like, of faith. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Like, well, that's what I was saying, like, when I rewatched it, I'm like, this it's very, like, religious, very yeah. faith-based. Because even when he goes back to save her, he's like, I'm not going to save her, and then sees a picture, he's like, now I have faith. There is dry <laughs> land. I shall go back and save that and little I'll girl. And I'll do anything to save her. And then Ooh, freaking... We'll um. Back. I love he grabs her, then all three smokers, including Dennis Hopper, just crash into each yeah. other and blow up, which they all probably would have crashed into each other anyway. It wasn't like <laughs> that bungee cord was only there for a second. It's yeah. not like they were obscured before that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I thought that was ridiculous, that whole ending. But that's the end of Dennis Hopper. Yeah, the shots were gorgeous. It was just one yeah. of those things. I think the whole finale, like in the documentary I watched, they said, like, yeah, well, we had two thirds of the script were great. Everyone loved them. Mm. We didn't know what the end was going to be. It's mm. going to be on the ship. We don't know what's going to happen on the ship. And that all feels like, okay, the ship blows up. Oh no, he flies away. Oh no, the plane crashes. Mm. Oh wait, now we're in the water. Okay, we get away. Oh no, the they, girl. Was like, they try to do the then, same and then, bits. And yeah. then, and then. They try to do the same bits over and over again. Like Dennis Hopper gets away now. Oh, he's uh, getting away now. He's going to wait now. Um, so yeah, they eventually follow the coordinates and they make it to Tryland. When they bring her back in is when Gregor finally sees the map upside down. Yeah, uh, she's like climbing over the yeah. side. He's like, "Oh, it is upside it's down." It's upside down. Yes. Oh. So he fit. They figure it out. They that go means to it's that way. <laughs> <laughs> they, they find Tryland. The sun is <laughs> that way. They're fascinated. Oh, what did you? Do? You're right. Yeah. Okay. okay. They're fascinated by dry land. <laughs> Helen's just like touching a tree. Like this is the most amazing thing ever. Yeah. I mean, it'd be pretty, it is pretty yeah. crazy. I mean, it is a gorgeous island. Yeah. Even it, if it was like, yeah, I've been on the land all the time. Yeah. If you went there, you'd be like, this is pretty, that's a nice island. Nice. <laughs> Normally you would just end the movie. They get to the dry land, but I guess they wanted to explain why Enola left. Yeah. So they find the, the little village where I guess that's her parents. Yeah, yeah, it must be her parents. Yeah, And they knew that they were dying. So they put the map on Enola and sent her out into the world, hoping someone would Moses find in her. a basket again with the religious analogy. <laughs> yeah. But I would have been like, why don't you just like give her like instruction, teach her like a message how to... in a bottle. Yeah. Or... Uh, so, yeah, they send her out into the world. <laughs> I guess she was too young to take care that's of. True, so, yeah. yeah, and there's no one else on there. Oh, so they're like, oh, they sent us out there. I'm like, okay. So I guess we'll end the movie here. It's like, no, you need to have a conversation because the Mariner needs to leave, even though there's no reason for him to leave, really. Yeah. I gotta go. But since Mad Max always leaves or gets <laughs> separated, they yeah, need to leave. If you're copying Mad Max, he's got he's to walk away. It's yeah. just the land sickness. It'll go away. Yeah. it's land. He's like, this place moves differently. <laughs> uh, so she's sad. She gets she leaves. But she's happy. She's home, but she's yeah. sad about it. Uh, then Helen's like, please don't leave. He's like, no, look, they said there might be more of my people out there. I'm like, so he hasn't met other mutants? <laughs> like, they also, seem like, like a, they're a known a thing. A mutant implies like a like a one-off genetically. It's yeah. not like, there's a species of us. It's like, yeah. no, you're a mutant. That's a genetic abnormality. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Uh, like, but I, I mean, also, do you not know who your mother is? Yeah. Did your mother have? He killed? says they tried to kill him when he was born. Yeah. yeah, he does mention that. Yeah. So like, but it doesn't imply whether that's his parents or like just the townsfolk. Yeah. yeah. 
He's Which, got blonde hair. I mean, Kill mutant, him. <laughs> mutant could be like just like a slur for them. Yeah, it could they just true. be that's how humanity is evolving. Uh, but he's like, nope, I gotta go look for them. And then the girl's like, I'm gonna give you a name that I read in a book before. <laughs> so your name will be Ulysses. He was about a sailor who <laughs> left and came back. And Mariner's like, yeah, sure, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. this is, but then he's just like. When I see other people, I will tell them about this place. And I'm sitting there going, no! Like, why? No! I'm like, like don't like, do it! Give them a test. Do like a... Yeah! Know, like, can you something. vet these people? Everyone you've met on the ocean is terrible. Like, hey, are you a smoker? Yeah. Oh, no. Even the well, people... I have dry land, and it's right that way. Yeah. By the way, even the people that are on that island now... Tried to kill you. Uh-huh, yeah. uh, they had weird rules. Like, uh-huh. no, don't tell anyone that they're there. How many people do you add to that island before it becomes another mm-hmm. religious cult? Where like, yeah. It's raining on us. <laughs> no, golly, we're getting flooded out. And then. Kill the children. I was fine <laughs> with them just. I was fine with them just being on an island. I'm like, oh, maybe this is saying that the world is like healing and going back uh-huh. to the way it was. But No. No, they had to explain what this island was. Apparently, this is what the director was like. Whoa, just like Planet of the Apes. Wow, Planet of the Apes ending. But we knew it was Earth, so it's not as impressive. Well, he said that, I think he said that like six times in that documentary. He's like, (laughs) just like Planet of the Apes. No, Planet of the Apes is a shock because, I mean, everyone knows. But if you don't know, that's a surprise. But we know we've been on Earth the whole time. (laughs) So yeah, they, they find had a- National Geographic, uh-huh. like yeah. So they have a plaque on the ground, and they like dig up the plaque, and it's like so and so here is Mount Everest. I'm like, oh, because it's the highest oh, point wow. on Earth. <laughs> like, oh my Great. god, that's so stupid. <laughs> it's so dumb. Uh. Oh shit, no, nah, this one I can't answer. That's actually that's a guy who's been on the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't want to talk to him. <laughs> have you seen? I love Waterworld. Want to put me on speaker? <laughs> well, come over and over. We just finished the review. Fuck, I should. You know what? I'll call him back. I'll call him back. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh. <laughs> hey, Mike. Uh, I'm actually in the middle of filming in an episode, but since uh-huh. you... Co- Can you hear me? Uh, I'm actually in the middle of filming an episode, but since you called, we just want to know, what are your thoughts on Waterworld? Uh, it was a dry movie, but, you know, <laughs> could, have been, could have been better. <laughs> okay, you rascal. I'll, uh, I'll call you back. I'm in the middle of shooting, all right? <laughs> all right, bye. <laughs> That was the handsome cop mic cameo. <laughs> <laughs> so are you ready for my fa- fan yes, theory? Yes, yes. Can I hear your... Th- so I, I didn't notice this ever watching the movie, but as we talked about it, I felt like I kept feeling these like Wizard of Oz parallels. Mm. Mm. Like the wizard's hot air balloon takes off too soon and Gregor's airship takes off too soon. And, you know, um, Enola's trying to go home and she's got like... The map, like the magical mm. item, which is like the ruby slippers, a, a kind of a MacGuffin yeah. to, to get home. Uh, the the Mariner and Helen, I guess, are some version of like the Lion, Tin Man, yeah. Scarecrow. It's not. It's not like a perfect. One doesn't have a fit. heart. Yeah, the one doesn't, <laughs> have, a heart. one doesn't have a brain. I don't yeah, I'm not really sure what it yeah. is, but it's like. I think the one drifter was the brainless guy. <laughs> <laughs> I I can't. I don't have this all fleshed out, yeah. but it, it like dawned on me. Oh, is there is is there some sort of parallel here? I mean, if you're gonna rip off Mad Max, why not rip off Wizards of Oz too? You know. Um, yeah, that's an interesting way to look at it. Uh, I don't know. All that's said and done, it was a good idea. It's got some nice cinematography. I would like to see this done better. I know it's your favorite movie of all time. You're getting that tattoo on your back. It's almost done. I got the outline. (laughs) I just need the shading. It's upside down, but that's okay. (laughs) They hang you by your feet to do it. And I get how people like would like this if they were watching on TV and could take breaks. Uh Uh, I could see being in a theater, the middle section being a drag. Um, I don't know. It doesn't. Kevin Costner doesn't work for me in this film anyway. He's not really doing it for me there. The characters are all kind of annoying. 
and they're all kind of assholes, but not in like an interesting way, yeah. really. When the world ends, everyone's an asshole. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, when I'm waiting for the smokers to come back because I have yeah. more fun with them, there's yeah. a bit of an issue here. Uh, but no, it's not like the worst thing ever. I don't think anyone at the time thought it was the worst movie ever. It was just, it was overhyped, I guess. Yeah. yeah. In, the, uh, in that documentary, uh, they mentioned like when they had the big screening, at least one of the, or some of the reviewers were like, this is going to be the worst movie of all time. Yeah. Came up, well, it wasn't terrible. It's, and that's what they, they wanted it to fail. Yeah. And it's it wasn't derivative. Like, oh, okay. I'll it's give you fun. that. It, it's derivative. It's, it's cool. not as good. You had better options at the time. Yeah. Like, I, it would have. You would have had a better day going to Blockbuster and renting Beyond Thunderdome than watching <laughs> this, really. Uh, but no, some of the stunts are impressive. Oh, yeah. The sure. ideas are cool. Um, a lot of practical effects and stuff like that, which is always cool. Yeah. Yeah. But no, this is another one where I wouldn't mind a remake. It's like, there's something there. Yeah. You can yeah, do be cool. something with this. Don't call it Waterworld, for the love a, of God. I don't know. Chris Hemsworth in there or something. <laughs> or uh, I don't know. Who's up and coming? I don't know any... Ugh. Uh, Timothy that, that, Chalamet, the guy Chalamet, from Wonka and yeah. Dune, mm. he'll be the Mariner. Yeah, throw that guy in there. That little <laughs> wimpy, that little He's noodle. 90 pounds with wet. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a great line for the movie. Yeah. <laughs> 90 pounds wet. Uh, but yeah, no, it is a fun time. I would say definitely check out the film if you've never seen it before. Uh, just because, like, historically, it's an important film. Because like, yeah. that was a very publicized big box off like big budgeted failure like that was like the first time that people really were aware of yeah. box office it became yeah. like a thing that it was reported and people wow well, oh, it didn't do well in the box office. Yeah. who cares the why only... would the general public give a shit about how much money the thing made if it's a good movie yeah there were other publicized ones like ishtar yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, and apparently I saw that people were calling it <laughs> Kevin's Gate because the movie Heaven's Game oh, yeah. was the one that went way over budget. Yeah. But no, I mean, there's something there. Dennis Hopper. Watch it for Dennis Hopper. Honestly, Dennis Hopper. Anything with him in it. He, do yourself a favor. Great. Go on YouTube and just look up Dennis Hopper Waterworld scenes, <laughs> really. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'd say check it out. Check it out. Their, their heart was in the right place. Maybe it was like too many cooks with the uh, Kevin Costner and the director yeah. clashing. Seeing this idea without an ego getting in the way. <laughs> or a, a divorce. Real, or a divorce. <laughs> yeah. It, it might be better. But, um, yeah, and I guess uh, if you want to know about the toys, Kevin, where can we go? There's going to be an episode of Peg Warmers, all about the toys with all three of us on oh, it. Oh, man. It's going to be exciting. I can't wait. I mean, I lived it, so <laughs> I, I guess I can. Wait. I don't know how we filmed these so far apart. But they're coming, <laughs> know, they're gonna come out at the same time. So, look, scheduling has been a bitch. Okay, the holidays really threw us off. I, I can't believe I didn't say this during that. The toy line is not a myth. I've seen it. <laughs> Cut that in. <laughs> By the way, every time you quote that. All I can think about is uh, Cable Guy. <laughs> cable Guy. When he's fighting John it's not a myth. I've seen it. I don't know why everyone oh. thinks it sucks. I've seen the movie five times. It rules. <laughs> cable Guy's another one. I love that movie. Cable as a Guy kid. is good. I absolutely cable love Guy, that movie. like Cable Guy. And people like, hate it. I like, saw that in my dad took us to see that in theaters. Really? Oh. Me and my little sister was like, oh, he's for George, dumb and dumber. Let's go see cable guy. I'm like, oh, this is a different We just type. had the VHS and we wore that out. Yeah. <laughs> Me and my brother cable loved guy's that. a fun time. We still quote that to this day. Yeah. Like, we went to medieval times and we're like putting chicken on our face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cable Science. guy. Science. Cable Science. guy might have influenced a lot of annoying character traits for me and my teens. Like half of the, the pop culture I know is from <laughs> Tiny Toons and Cable Guy and weird movies like that. It's it's wonderful. Ooh, but yeah, check out Peg Warmers. Ryan, what do you got? Nothing. I was on Peg Warmers and that was great. That's <laughs> what I'm just going to say. Do you have more items for sale? Can people still get the stuff? They, the stuff will be back in stock yeah. very soon because I get a message a day at least. Or like, <laughs> do you have the stuff? My husband would love. I would love the stuff. Actually, hey, I got three cousins who want the stuff. I forget what video I posted recently, but someone. It was for an episode. Had, you weren't in it. Had nothing to do with anything. <laughs> but this was on set, and they were like, "I saw a can for the stuff, and I'm already in." I'm like, it's "Been on the set for like a year." Okay. <laughs> I watch the the show all the time. And I'm like, "Hey, look, there's, <laughs> there's, there's the, stuff. the Necronomicon. There's the stuff. There's the blob over yeah. here. My pet blob." Yeah. So I, I guess you. I will 
<laughs> I will. My pet blob. <laughs> Squish it, squash it. Nothing can stop it. Yeah. You can go to uh, Monster FX on Instagram. Check out my work. I am yes. releasing uh, Unhappy Meal Toys, Oof. a bunch of Mick Horror Nugget Buddies. I can't wait for those. Um, they're very fun. I have six of them. Uh, I'm about to do two more of them <laughs> and a bunch of other weird nonsense coming up. So. Cool. I'm excited for those. And yes, please like, share, subscribe. Go back and check out that Batman commentary track I did with Kevin. That was a fun one. And I think the X-Men episode is out by now. Ooh. Check that out. And what did we do last year? Turtles. A Turtles episode. We was did a Turtles. The worst Turtles episode. Oof. DMNT. What do you think is the worst Turtles movie? Oh, that's that's uh, that's a tough one. I'd have to go. I, I watched your episode, but I'm like, I'm trying to think which one. Well, go back and watch that and le leave a comment on that video. I'm going to go watch like, that Tony, video. Tony, I finally figured it Everyone out. Everyone else should, too. It was a great episode. I just can't remember. <laughs> All right, that's it from us. Goodbye. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page. Talk, talking, talking about tapes.